Beat and um, residents of Fetford, those of you who join us via YouTube tonight, and welcome to the, uh, the meeting of the town, Fetford Town Council, a meeting for June. Uh, as we are custom, we always proceed our meetings with a 15 minute open forum where members of the public or representatives of the press are invited to um, ask questions of the council. Joe, uh, Joe Connell, can we open that out, please? And um, to see if there's any questions from the public. Could you hear me, Joe? So, I'm just going to ask the clerk if she... Okay. I can hear you now, Joe. Thank you, thank you for coming back. Okay. There is a, a slight delay between us and the live stream. It's between 30 seconds and a minute to let you know. Well, whilst we're waiting for a question, I, I was sharing with some of our colleagues offline a comment I've received about virtual meetings, which have been quite well received. But I did have a request from uh, a resident who requested that councillors, when possible, can share their screens so they can see you. Because they like to... Um, to see how you interact, apparently. So I thought I'd just share that with you, colleagues. Can I say something, Mr. Chairman? Um, yep, yeah, as long as we haven't got any questions coming through, Councillor Taylor. Okay, in that case, I'll keep quiet. I know you don't like questions. <laughs> Joe, do you have any questions from the public? Okay. Well, I'm gonna, with colleagues' consent, I'm gonna look to move to the actual, the agendas, of tonight's agenda, rather than, um, you know, wait for 15 minutes in the vacuum. So, with colleagues' consent, I will move. I'm just looking at the screens now for a brief nod of the head. I will move to the main items. Thank, thank you, Councillor Brains, for a thumb up. I can see that brilliantly. Okay. So we move to our first item, which is item 7920, and that's to take declarations of any disclosable pecuniary interest. Um, I'm happy to take those now, or as we actually reach any items. Do we have anybody um, that needs to declare an interest in an item? Okay, I can see Councillor brain has got his um, hand up. I'm not sure whether I have to, Mr Mayor, or not. But I have just bought shares in Zoom and chat and Google um, meetings. And I'm not sure whether I need to disclose that. <laughs> I suspect you're going to be a very wealthy man. <laughs> and Chris, I don't believe anybody else has um, any disclosable interest that they've declared at this moment. As I say, I'm quite happy to take them on an item by item basis. Moving on to item 80 stroke 20, which is to receive apologies for absence. Chris Crimmon, as a secretary to the council, do you have any apologies? Could you unmute yourself, Chris? None received, I am sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Thank you very much. And <clears throat> moving swiftly on. Item 8120 is the minutes. And I've got three sets of minutes for you here. We have the full council meeting held on the 12th of May 2020. And I believe the um, the item number 9020 is below the line. And we also need to confirm the minutes of the 29th of May, which is their making. And our special full council is the 22nd of June. So I will take them each in their part. And I realise there's been some issues with the the formatting of the packs, so some of the pages may not run as uh, as ancient. Really right, yeah. Thank you, Chris. So can you see on the screen. I can. And I believe everybody else can too. Thank you. So I'm going to move to the minutes of the uh, uh, town council meeting held on the 12th of May 2020. I'm going to take page one, page two. 
page three. Page four. And page five. Um, I'm assuming members don't want me to go through the appendix page by page. There's 38 pages. <laughs> um, no, I, I don't think it's necessary to go through the appendix. Just a minute. Move the minutes. Thank you. Oh, agreed to move the minutes. Yes. Thank minutes. you, ladies and gentlemen. Great. Guys, I'll, I'll, just to follow on from my comment about the residents, um, it would help me immensely if I could see your hands, uh, your your, your fa faces, please, so I can actually pick up who wants to speak. Because at the moment, I'm I'm lying to solely on visuals, and I can only see about fifty percent of you. So if you want me so much, it's, it's a kind to actually join us visually. It would help me facilitate the meeting. Mr. Thank Chairman, you. Mr. Chairman, Councillor. Burnett, I'm on the phone, so I can't give you a visual. <laughs> Accepting Councillor Burnett, you have an exceptional circumstance. Thank you. Can you see me, Chair? Um, yes, I, I was about to say, unfortunately, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, moving on to my second set of minutes, which is for the mayor making, which took place on Friday the 29th of May. Page one. Page two. Move the minutes. Move. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, guys. And finally, on to our special, meet uh, special meeting of the Town Council, which we held last Monday on the 22nd of June. Page one. Page two. Page three. And page four. Move the minutes. Move. Move. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. And that moves us swiftly on to item 82 stroke 20, which is the committee report. And the first of those we're going to receive tonight is from the Amenities, Lands and Properties Committee. And I will pass you over to the Chair, Councillor Brendan Cannon. Um, thank you, Mr Mayor. I'm pleased to present the meetings of the 21st of May. Um, from a minute's land and property. There are no recommendations. If you'd like to go through page one. Page two. Page three. Page four. Move the minutes, please, Mr. Uh, Mr. Mayor. Move. Thank you. Move, move the minutes. Thank you very much, Brenda. Our next report is from the Venues and Events and Marketing Committee, which is actually the committee I chair myself. But. Thinking about your well-being, colleagues, I don't want to inflict my con my dulcet tones on you any more than I have to. So I'm going to invite my vice chair, which is Councillor Barreto, to present the minutes. Thank you, Chair. Um, I therefore present the minutes for the Venues Events and Marketing Committee, held on 22nd of May, 11 a.m. There are, because the format is not quite right, I would imagine there's two pages. However, there is a recommendation on item 897-19, which is the Guildhall Internal Works to present the full council, um, which is the approval of the tender. Uh, I will proceed to read the recommendation. That the Death for Town Council accept the tender for the changes to the Guildhall toilets, make the ramp safe and the display case in the entrance hall for £61,860, with the funds to come from Heritage Lottery funding agreed in the minutes of the 15th of January 2020. So I'll pass it on to you, Chair. Um, would you like to propose this for approval? Please? No, well, first of all, should we, if, could you just take us through, um, thank you for that, Carla, could you take us through page by page so members have the opportunity to go through it chronologically, so you can go through page one. Sorry about that. Yes, page one. That would be page yeah. two. I believe. 
And if I'm not mistaken, I do apologize, the format on my screen was not 100%. I would be the remainder of page three. And that's item 897 stroke 19, because on correct. my page, it, it's page two. So I, I appreciate it's your difficulty. On page two, but it is, seems a bit off shape at the moment. So we have a recommendation on page two of my sheet, and yes. there it is for you up on the screen. That's correct. Do you want to move the minutes? Should we move the minutes? Hi. There you All go. Right. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You. Uh, Chair, there's a recommendation, so we need a vote on it. Oh, my, my apologies. My apologies. I did, um, I did ask. Yeah. <laughs> Should we I'll stop? Vote in a second, please. I'll, I'll second it. Councillor Burnett. Thank you. Seconder, please. Okay. So, thank you. Who was that? Can Han. Thank you. Do we so, then vote or? Chris, would you like to? You've had the proposal, you've had the rec, you've had the seconder. Can we actually get the vote sorted? Um, do, you, do you want to quote for it or just pass it through? It's up to you. Let, let me just get the register. I won't be one moment. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Chair, one, suggestion, Chair. One, one moment, please. It, it'd be, it would help if you can either put your hand up so I can actually see who's talking rather than, you know, because two of you called out at the same time then. Okay. Who, who was, you know, I heard Mr. Chair, so I'll take that one first. That was me, uh, Dennis uh, Crawford. <laughs> uh, Thank you. When we were doing the minutes earlier in the... Um, Pool Council. There was a recommendation on the last one, wasn't there? Did was that already passed? That's full council. So it's part. Yep. Sorry to interrupt. I've got it myself. Thank you. Thank you, Council Crawford. Yeah, sorted it out. Thank you. I am sorry. I wasn't in my office, and uh, I'm in the kitchen, and it's behind me all the time. So here we go. I'm going to ask first of all, alphabetically, uh, Councillor Barretta. Approved. Councillor Brain. Oh. Councillor Brendel. In favour. Councillor Burnett. For. Councillor Cannon. For. Councillor Crawford. Agreed. Councillor Harvey. For. Thank you. Councillor Hodgkinson. Agreed. Councillor Hollis. Agreed. Thank you. Councillor James. Agreed. Councillor Jeremy. For. Councillor Robinson. Agreed, Chris. Yeah. Councillor Taylor. For. Councillor Wright. For. That's all for. That's 16, uh, 14 votes for. Thank you. Move the minutes. Move. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, well done, Carla. Um, that brings us on to the personnel committee, and I hand over to Councillor Roy Brain. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'd like to propose the minutes for the personnel committee held on the 2nd of June. There are no recommendations. So, page one. That was quite succinct. <laughs> Can we move the minutes? Thank you. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. And um, we're back again to them. Uh, I just set a moment ago and invite my vice chair, Councillor, to, uh, to present the minutes. Sorry, chair. I thought oh, no, I've got one. I do apologise. Um, I, I apologise. I apologise. I got excited there. I'm actually going to take you back to the planning committee and hand over to Councillor Brindle. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm pleased to present the minutes of the planning committee. Of the, he's changed it, so I can't see the date, but I think it's the 9th. It is. It is. Yeah. Okay, and if I, if I can take you through those. Please, so thank you. One. 
Okay, that's page one. Are we all happy there? Can we move on? We're, move, we're moving on following the screen. Yep. All happy so far? Yes. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Th these are the planning consultations. We're going through them steadily. Any comments, please get them out. I can't see them. <laughs> so we're, we're on 30. We, we've, reached, we've reached 32, 30. 32, 20, I should say. No comments so far. Um, and we come to we come to a recommendation which I think uh, the mayor has advised. This is on 3420. If you can hold it there, Chris, for a moment. The mayor has yep. advised that the committee has the power to introduce this itself without consultation, particularly as the planning committee is a committee of the full council anyway. So uh, I understand from the uh, town clerk that there is no need for a vote on this. It's not a recommendation. It's a decision by the planning committee. Tina, you might like to confirm that I've got that right. Well, I'll just give you a note on that. Um, the town clerk's connection has dropped. Um, yeah, but Mike, I just make a comment on that. I'm presuming this doesn't um, over, overlay a member of the public wanting to speak on an application prior to us making a comment. If um, uh, we, we have run a system in the past where members of the public could approach the chair in advance and ask to come to the meeting when it was a, a real meeting and speak. I don't see any reason why we can't retain that. So by prior notice, a member of the public can arrange to speak. That's certainly still possible. OK. Yeah, do I have this, permission this, to change that recommendation to a resolved? Hmm. All right. Agreed. Thank yeah, you. I would suggest that. Thank you. Thank you very much, colleagues. And uh, I think if that's the case, we just need to finish off going through the minutes, Chris. Yeah. Unless there are any further comments or questions, can I ask your approval? Aye. Aye. So Thank move you. the minutes. So move the minutes. Uh, thank, thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Councillor Barreto, guess what's coming? Um, I move, I move, we move on to the. Sorry, um, I'm picking up someone's feedback there. Um, we move on to the Benzel and Marketing Committee held on the 10th of June. I'm going to hand over again to my Vice Chair, Councillor Barreto, to present the minutes. Right. Um, you just see on the screen because the format, like I said, is not brilliant. I'm struggling to get the documents. Would you like me, because I've got a printed copy of the documents, would you like me to take it on this occasion? Um, I think I've caught it. So it's the one for the 10th of June, you say? Yeah. The, so, um, thank you. I therefore present the minutes to the virtual meeting for venues, events, and marketing committee held on the 10th of June at 1 p.m. So it's page one, page two. And is that correct? That is a little bit on page three, or is just the page two? I'm sorry, my screen the format yeah, is not. Just, yeah, there's just an action plan at the back end of it. Yeah, yeah, at the third. So, should we move the minutes? No. Okay. All right. Thank you. Agreed. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Barreto. Thank you. Thank you. And that moves us on now to item 8320, which is the Mayor's remarks and reports. And I, just bear with me, please. It's just a virtual meeting first of the Civic. Oh, do you know what? I do apologise. I do apologise. I'm doing you all a disservice. I brought out two committees, haven't I? So, so we can get someone more competent. Councillor James, would you like to present the minutes, please? Thank please. you, Mr Mayor, although I am concerned that you're defining me as a level of competency. So, 
<laughs> I beg leave to present the minutes of the virtual civic meeting conducted on Thursday, the 11th of June. Um, for those of you who are scro scrolling through on the current pack, that is page 64. Um, I'll scroll down. We go. There are three recommendations. So please bear with me as it's a little bit clunkier in this virtual world. So if we go to page 65 there. And on agenda item 5220, we have our first recommendation that Thetford Town Council nominate candidate seven as the person to receive the Honoured Citizen Award for 2020-21. Yep. There was not there was a sheet added on an appendix that, uh, that is outlined the candidates. Councillor, Councillor James, would it help you because you've got three recommendations if, if you, you took them on block? Should we take the first two on block because ultimately they are similar but different, as it were. Yeah. Um, the <laughs> second, uh, the, the final um, recommendation is actually the terms of reference. So okay. I think we'll do it a disservice if we actually did those all together. Is that OK? That's great. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So the second part of that recommendation under Honoured Citizens Award is that Thetford Town Council nominate candidate one as the person to receive the Junior Honoured Citizen Award for 2020 21. Um, and I have so a proposal, please. I propose that, Councillor Burnett. Thank you. Seconder, Councillor Cannon. Thank you. Thank you. And if you'd like to, to do the honours, please, Chris. Yeah. I'm going through alphabetically again. So, Councillor Beretta. Four. Councillor Brain. Four. Councillor Brindle. Four. Councillor Burnett. Four. Councillor Cannon. Four. Councillor Crawford. Four. Councillor Harvey. Four. Councillor Hodgkinson. Four. Councillor Hollis. Four. Councillor James. Four. Councillor Jeremy. Four. Councillor Robinson. Chris, uh, I'm, I'm very supportive of this, but just as a protocol going forward, whenever I, I chair a meeting, I tend to save my vote as a casting vote. Okay, I understand. I'll, I'll bear that in mind in future. Thank, Thank you. you. Councillor Taylor. Agree. And Councillor Wright. Four. Thank you. That's uh, unanimous again. Thank you. And we, and the, the good news is the town, the town clerk's back and she can't undo all the decisions we've just made. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back, Tina. Thank you. I thought you were going to say it's the end of the meeting. <laughs> so, as, as beautifully done by... Our, our minute secretary there, you'll see right before your eyes, the <laughs> final recommendation turned to red there, which is that Thetford Town Council adopt the amended civic terms of reference with the changes that are listed within the minutes to the document. And that was um, added to the minutes and the papers as Appendix B. Thank you. And, and again, we're looking for a proposal and a seconder, please. Oh. Sorry. Sorry. Who was that first? Brenda Cannon. Thank you, Brenda. So I, can, I, can I just ask you again to put your hands up, please? So I can actually see who's trying to engage. Thank you. That's yes, Roberto. Thank yes. you. Thank you. So I'm going to run through the list again, please, folks. So I've got Councillor Barretto. Four. Councillor Brain. Four. Councillor Brindle. Four. Councillor Burnett. Four. Councillor Cannon. Four. Councillor Crawford. Four. Councillor Harvey. Agreed. Councillor Hodgkinson. Four. Councillor Hollis. Four. Councillor James. Four. Councillor Jeremy. Four. Councillor Taylor. Four. Councillor Wright. Four. Thank you again. That's unanimous. Chair. Yeah. Thank you very much. Are we moving the minute? Yes. Move. 
Thank you. Yeah. Marvellous. Thank, thank you for that, Councillor James. But don't rest easy because we're back to you again for our Finance Committee. <laughs> thank you, Mr Mayor. I beg leave to present the minutes of the Virtual Finance Committee conducted online on Tuesday, 23rd of June. There are a number of recommendations, um, Mr Chairman. How would you like us to pr proceed on this one? I'm quite happy. Um, <coughs> you feel they can be taken on block for you to do that? Oh, you know, I'm, I'm quite happy to take your steer on this, being it's your, uh, your area of expertise. May I suggest that we take the, um, so apologies, um, fellow councillors, we're starting on page 73 of the document that hopefully you've had access to. Um, and the first recommendation is under 6720. I'd propose that we take 6720, uh, 6820 and 6920 together. Those are the recommendations that Thetford Town Council adopt the income and expenditure report, oh, expenditure report for the year end 31st of March 2020, and that we approve the list of payments made since the last meeting and also adopt the council-led internal control review. If we can take those on block, please, Mr Chairman. I'm, I'm, I'm like a, sorry. very happy with that. Can I have a proposal for those, please? I propose that, Councillor Burnett. Thank you. And Councillor Mike Brindle. Thank you. Here we go again. Thank Councilor you. Councillor Brain. Four. Councillor Brain. Four. Councillor Brindle. Uh, four. Councillor Burnett. Four. Councillor Cannon. Four. Councillor Crawford. I agree with the recommendations. Thank you. Councillor Harvey. Four. Councillor Hodgkinson. Four. Councillor Hollis. Four. Councillor James. Four. Councillor Jeremy. Four. And Councillor Taylor. Agreed. Thank you. Councillor Wright. Four. That's uh, uh, all unanimous again. Thank you. Would you like to continue, Councillor James? Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, we move on to page 74 um, of the large document that we've had circulated previously, and you have in front of yourselves on the screen there. Um, I'd like to recommend on 7120 that Thetford Town Council approve the schedule of reserves, which forms Appendices, Appendix C, please. Thank you. Thank you. I have a proposal, please. I propose that, Councillor Burnett. Thank, Thank you. you. And a seconder, please. I'll second that. Councillor that Brown. Ca Thank you, Roy. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Do your magic. Ready? Ready. Councillor Barretto. Four. Councillor Brain. Four. Councillor Brindle. Four. Councillor Burnett. Four. Councillor Cannon. Four. Councillor Crawford. Affirmative. Thank you, Councillor Harvey. Four. Councillor Hodgkinson. Four. Councillor Hollis. Four. Councillor James. Four. Councillor Jeremy. Abstain. Abstain, thank you. Uh, Councillor Taylor. Agreed. And Councillor Wright. Four. So I've got 12 four and one abstention. Thank you. And back to you, Councillor James. Thank you. So the final recommendation um, above the line on this item is 7220, that the Finance Committee um, recommend the attached timetable, uh, approve the attached timetable and recommend its adoption to Council. May I have a proposal, please? I propose that, Councillor Burnett. Thank you. A seconder, please. <coughs> Councillor Cannon. Thank you. Thank you, Brenda. Okay, last time on this one. So we've got Cantor Beretta. Four. Cantor Brain. Four. Cantor Brindle. Four. Cantor Burnett. Four. Cantor Cannon. 
Four. Councillor Crawford. Four. Councillor Harvey. Agreed. Councillor Hodgkinson. Four. Councillor Hollis. Agreed. Councillor James. Four. Councillor Jeremy. Four. Councillor Taylor. Agreed. And Councillor Wright. Four. That was you, then, number seven. Thank you. So that's it for now. We'll have to come back to that one, Chair. Okay. Would you like to move the minutes, colleagues? Move the minutes. Vote. Thank you very much indeed, colleagues. Thank you. Thank you but that, that moves us on to item 8420, which is the Mayor's remarks and reports. Okay. So um, it's been some four, possibly five weeks now since I went into the chair. Um, when I did go into the chair, I assumed my mayor's report would be to update on my progress as a rather lax gardener, much to the dismay of the mayor's, or simply to inform you that I had not been able to attend events due to current restrictions. However, in these challenging times, we adapt. So I'm getting a bit of background noise there. So I'll just pause for a moment while that gets sorted. However, in these challenging times, we adapt. And though not able to meet with other civic leaders, I've actively, actively sought to work in different ways. Utilising social media, I've started to highlight to individuals, community groups, or places of interest within our great town. The objective is simple, to showcase our town to our wider audience in a positive light. Alongside this, I was pleased to join Sam Chapman Allen, leader of Breckland, and some colleagues on Monday the 15th of June for the launch of the Shop with Confidence campaign. We all know our retailers are having it tough and will continue to have it tough as we seek to return to a semblance of normality. And I, I continue with open arms to work with those individuals, organisations which seek to support during this difficult period and beyond. On Sunday, I was privileged to attend Fetford Open Garden virtual cake sale in aid of St Nicholas Hospice. The organisers, I, I can only say, have, ad have adapted magnificently and are on course to raise several thousand of pounds. They're not going to meet um, the, the, the grand total they met last year, which was eleven and a half thousand pounds. But seeing they've been running 14 years, I estimate they've raised well over a hundred thousand pounds supporting the local hospice charity, which is only to be commended. And actually, it's uplifting to see, even during these chastening times, that there are people out there working hard for the benefit of others. All in all, I feel I, like the rest of you, and, and the wider community are adapting to the new, new norm, but I'm pleased to be reaching out to the community. And that, that ends my report, colleagues. Can I ask you a question? A couple of questions you on your report. Well, well, yes, of course you can, Councillor Taylor. Well, first of all, I'd like to make an observation and uh, say that I was very disappointed with the Breckland Conservative councillors, including the Mayor and Councillor Brahim, who I thought was hiding behind a sofa, for parading through Thetford Town Centre when the shops opened to what I thought was the detriment of a, of a town council-led civic event, where I thought we could have united the whole town in support of the shops from a civic point of view, with you, the Mayor, maybe young Harry doing a bit of a shout, and then the Breckland business aspect coming in afterwards. I just think we missed a massive, massive trick there. And I think the uh, Thetford Tory Breckland councillors really let themselves down to the detriment of Thetford from a civic point of view. That's an observation, Mr Mayor. Would you like to come back on that? Yes, I would, actually, because um, I'm, I'm glad that you observed. And actually, what it was, Mark, was a good example of three district councils. So that's actually... Um, Broadland, South Norfolk, and Brecon District Council that are delivering the Shop with Confidence campaign. And if you're taking the time to look a little bit, maybe a little bit more closely, I mean, you've highlighted one party, but there was district councillors from across the piece at that event. It was a district event. I was very proud to be invited along. We still were here adhering to social distancing rules. So, I agree, it would have been great to have other people there. 
but we were trying to promote shopping with confidence, supporting our retailers and giving our re- residents the confidence that they can undertake that safely. So I, I take your comments on board, but I don't necessarily agree with them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I do just think that with the, you know, you dressed up as the mayor, a few robes, the, the town crier potentially a bit more artistic put into it would have, would have been better. But, you know, that's that's a difference of opinion. Uh, the other question I've got for you, you spoke about social distancing. You know my uh, my opinion of these meetings visual. Uh, so my, quest- my question to you as the chairman is, when will we stop the visual meetings and A, hold meetings outside on a good weather day planned, and B, have meetings in the Carnegie rooms, and in both A and B, we could go with whatever distance that we're adhering to that day. And let, let, let's get back and start meeting the public and get out from behind the screen. That's my question to you as the chairman. Thank you for that, Mark. As, you, as every other organisation, business, community and resident within the country, we are led by the latest information and direction from government. And I think it's quite important when the opportunity arises that we return to what we consider to be a norm. But at, at this stage, you've only got to look at what's happened to Leicester recent, uh, you know, in, in, in the last few days to realise we're not over the worst. We still have to be vigilant. And we've adapted. And, you know, I think, actually, I'm quite pleased. We, we've been doing these meetings now for about a month. And we, we, we still we still have hiccups in the road because it's a new way of working for us all. But they're improving, and it's improving engagement for those that sometimes don't always reach us. I wouldn't want ever to come away from the um, the face-to-face meetings. Because that's, I think that's where we do it, our best business. But um, I think, Mark, the overall arching thing is that we, we are um, directed by central government the scientific data that they have access to, and we follow the lead. I've got Councillor uh, James with her hand up. Can I just finish? Yes, but I do want to give other, Mark, I do, Mark, I do want to give other councillors the opportunity to come in as well. I'll, I'll so, be quick. It was my question. Thank you. Is that I'm, me? I'm, yeah? sorry. I'm waiting. I'm not doing bad for a man that don't like questions. No, I'd just like to invite you as the mayor to come with me shopping in Sainsbury's and Tesco so you can see really what's going on. And also, I'm uh, in the middle of penning a letter to Reese Mogg to ask him why he can do what he can down in the Houses of Parliament, but we can't do it here at Thetford and hopefully get a, uh, an answer off the leader of the House of Commons. I just thought I'd throw that one on, on you. Thank you very much. Well, Councillor Taylor, just to answer that. I'm, I'm quite a fan with shopping in both of those um, and other retailers. I'm quite happy to create a shopping list of your pay and join you. <laughs> we could have a meeting and pretend we're at Tesco's. That should keep you all happy then. Mm. You can bring a Tesco bag with spuds in and you'll be OK. Fantastic. Councillor James. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I look forward to Councillor Taylor's engagement with the Civic Committee to bring forward such great ideas as he's voiced here. Thank you. Is there anybody else you, won't let, you won't let me speak. Um, <laughs> um, Mr. Mayor, could I say that we've got hands up from Councillor Brame, Councillor Wright, at Councillor Hollis, and Councillor Brindle? I'll take them in that order. Thank you, Tina. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I would like to say that um, I'm getting a little tired with Councillor Taylor's ribs at me at every full council. My father is 93 and I am shielding him to the best of my ability. If he feels that I should go and do something else, then that is his opinion. But I am asking you as the chair to please ask him to stop having a pop at me at every opportunity, to keep saying I'm behind the couch. I have been at work today in full protective gear because I am terrified that my 93-year-old father will catch COVID from me. And I don't feel I have to sit here 
and listen to Mr. Taylor. Call me names. I understand we have a new councillor on the council from emails called Councillor Brake, who I've got no idea who that is. But I wish to tell Councillor Taylor, I am not going to put my father's life at risk just to please him. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Councillor Brame. And actually, what we ought to remember, we all have circumstances beyond this meeting tonight, demands and concerns. And I will ask you all just to show a little bit more compassion to each other when you're making those comments. And I do actually agree, we need to drop the personal references within the debate. It does not show us in a good light, does not show us personally in a good light. So we should stick to the meeting, the relevant point, and anything else is for the play yard. Councillor um, Tina, I can't remember who the next speaker was. It's Councillor Wright, then Councillor Hollis. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, Thank you. Just following on to that point, it's just really how, the, what procedure there will be in terms of getting us back to face-to-face uh, -face meetings. Obviously, the Carnegie is the obvious place where the social distancing would work. We can be one side mm -hmm. and to the other. And um, But I think, you know, just understanding the procedure of how we can get that um, lined up, because obviously I understand we do have to go with government guidelines on these matters, um, but things are you know, easing off despite what Leicester's happening. Um, so, you know, at the earliest opportunity, one, one would like to see us back in probably the Carnegie before King's House. I've, I've every confidence, as you know, we're being well briefed. The officers are bringing things forward as guidance changes. Uh, and I'm confident the standing up meetings when that guidance comes through, that we're able to adapt, we will have that put, put before us. So at the moment, I don't have anything more to add on that, Councillor Wright, I'm afraid for you, but I'm just as keen as your good self to, to return to what we consider to be a, a normal way of holding meetings. I have another council wishing to speak up. Um, was it Councillor Holly? It's, it's, um, we've got um, Councillor Hollis, Councillor Brindle and Councillor Barreto. Thank you. I'm struck. I, I can't see the screens that well. I do apologise for that. I'll take them in those order, please. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, can I go back to the opening of the town, please? Um, it was nice to see Breckland councillors there um, and other councillors. Um, but can you just point me in the right direction? Because I don't remember seeing an email inviting any of the town councillors. So have I missed that email somewhere? Would you be able to point me in the right direction, please? I believe it was sent out to district reps, um, Councillor Hollis. Can I come back, sir? Can, get that either. can I come back, please? Please do. Um, well, you know, Thetford Town councillors are just as important as what Breckland councillors are. And I think that if we're just town councillors, maybe we should have had some kind of invite. Um, not being disrespectful, but, it, you know, common courtesy would have, have harmed anybody. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. No, I, uh, I, it's, it's a valid point, but I would, I would take you back also. So you've got to remember where we were almost two weeks ago. There were still concerns around the social distancing. And I think, you know, it's a district council initiative. So I, I should imagine you look to all your district councillors to support. I take your point about engagement of town council. And I'm glad you brought it up because we're obviously going to be discussing how we work together later on. So there's obviously an area there to be discussed. Can I come back on that then, Mr Mayor, from what you've just said, please? You can. Sorry, sorry um, other councillors. You've just said you're, you're hoping, am I right? You've just said you're hoping we can work together? I so, I, I, so are you, excuse me, are you saying that the Breckland councillors that are sitting on Thetford Town Council are not actually working for the, counts, uh, the town council? They're working for Breckland. Am I no. misunderstanding something here? 
you know, I think you're being very cute with my words, if I'm nice, Councillor Hollis. I think you're twisting my words. No, not at all. OK, well, that's, that's, that's my reading of it, so I'll agree to disagree. Mm. <laughs> Councillor Brindle, next. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, we're in danger, I think, of losing a really important point because of a certain amount of name calling, and I'm sorry about that. It's very regrettable. Yeah. I think you've, you've done right, Mayor, to call it out. Uh, the, the important point is that we, as a council, should be doing everything we can to support local Thetford businesses. The point was made originally by Mark Taylor, but lost in, in, in the storm of personalisation. Uh, we should be working to help our local businesses not just recover, but all the time it should be automatic that we would be looking to support separate businesses by giving them work where we possibly can and in other ways we've seen Gretchen putting signs up around town uh, that's something an initiative that we can back and we can support not just now uh, as this virus takes its toll but when things have recovered we need to go on and go on all the time supporting local business so it's just a plea that we don't forget this at the end of the current crisis. We should, it should be a permanent part of the Town Council's target to support ah. local business. Uh -huh. Thank yeah. you, Councillor Brenda, for bringing us back to where we should be. And I believe I've got Councillor Barretto. Are you with us, Carla? Mm -hmm. Sorry, I think my microphone was down. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, so just three points in regards to the conversations ongoing. Um, first one, in regards to personal issues and, and um, you know, animosities. I, th I think the, the council, um, the full council is not is not the time for it. There is a platform for people to present their concerns and their grievances uh, formally rather than um, doing it um, and disrupting um, the smooth running of the council meetings. Um, second one, I do agree with Councillor Hollis. Um, I think that would be nice if the local councils had been invited to opening of the town. This is, uh, this is just a personal opinion. However, I'm happy that the event was done and that the town is finally open. It is down to getting the, getting the economy going and getting businesses to the doors and, and to improve. <laughs> So it's got nothing to do with who who's done the event with the political parties, but it would be nice to do to have done some lines of having maybe having town cry and something be more, um, you know, council orientated and, and, and locally based. Um, the other the other last point is um, regarding the meetings, the virtual meetings and the physical meetings. Uh, I've read government guidelines. We still very much at a time where they prefer uh, business to be conducted virtually. However, I understand and I agree there are added advantages of the physical interaction, uh, spe uh, specifically in, in, a, in a council environment and, and with, the, with the business and the interaction between people running smoothly um, and, and more informal as, as by virtual um, by a virtual setting. Um, I do. It is my opinion that perhaps we can hold a little bit longer on virtual meetings, just until things stabilize a little bit. And as guidelines are lifting up and things may be improving, perhaps we set up a, a, a date towards like September, you know, post summer, um, for to restart physical meetings and benefit of those. Obviously, looking at a risk assessment, how we're going to do it, um, what's the venue, and how to do it properly within within the rules. Uh, for for everybody's safety, really. Um, but I think this really is down to, you know, different views. I think different councils have a different view on it. So perhaps a compromise of keeping things safer for a bit longer and then start introducing gradually ways of bringing people back together, albeit with social distance and maybe a meter or two, but to get in one venue to be able to interact together. Thank you, Cher. Thank you. I, I can't see any more um, hands up on that. Tina, can you? No, there's not. There is a, a comment from um, Councillor Harvey, though. He does say that he works for the people of Thetford, whether that's as a district or a town councillor. Well, I'm always on the positive. I always take the positive out of a conversation. And mostly, I've taken on board the comments from um, Councillor Hollis and Councillor Barreto. 
and I hope they approach this, the, the, the item 8720 in the same vein. I'm going to move the items on now, actually, to our, uh, our agenda item 8520, which is reports from county and district councillors. And I will go around in um, alphabetical order, which brings me to Councillor Brighton. Sorry, Chair, is it, should it be town rep first? I've jumped again, haven't I, Chris? I'm sorry, I'm just... Sorry. You're quite right. It's 84.20, so no one gets... I do it. It's town council representatives on other bodies. So I'm going to do it in alphabetical order. Councillor Barreto? I'm not at the moment participating at the, in external bodies. Thank you. Councillor Brain. Nothing for me. F thank you. Councillor Brindle. Yes, I would like to say a word about Charles Burrell Centre, just to say two things very briefly. The first is that they are continuing to offer a great many uh, virtual activities, and some of you may have had a leaflet perhaps even today about that. And secondly, that the genuine, real opening will take place on Saturday, the 4th of July, which is a hopeful sign for all of us, one of many that we're getting back to nearer normal normal behaviour. Thank, thank you. Thank you for that, Councillor Brindle. Councillor Burnett. I'd just like to say, Mr Chairman, that I think to all councillors that they should remember that we would actually buy the public to work as one body in regards to the benefit of the people of Fetford, mm -hmm. and that we should remember that, and politics shouldn't come into it. Thank you. Do you have anything to update on the outside body agenda item, Councillor Burnett? No, I do not. Thank you. Councillor Cannon. Um, not really, just as, as, as you all know, the Charles Bowen Museum is still closed. We don't know whether we'll be able to open this term um, or not. It's a, a wait and see. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Crawford. Uh, I have nothing to add as I've been in isolation. Councillor Harvey. I'm not on any, any outside bodies. No, no one will have me. Uh, every, every silver cloud, eh, Chris? Councillor Hodginson. I have nothing to add. Thank you. Councillor Hollis. I'll choose my words very um, carefully, Mr Mayor. Um, I'm like um, Councillor Harvey. Nobody will have me on an outside body. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Hollis. Councillor James. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I would just like to flag that the first virtual meeting of the Greater Thetford Partnership will be taking place on Wednesday, the 8th of July. Ooh. Thank you. Councillor Jeremy. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. I don't have anything under outside bodies because I'm also not a rep on any outside bodies. <laughs> Councillor Taylor. Nothing should be involved, thank you. Thank you. And Councillor Wright. Yeah, not as a rep of outside bodies, but following on from Brenda's update on the Charles Burrell, uh, Dad's Army Museum are looking at what measures we can um, put in place to try and get some kind of opening later in the year. Um, we're mindful that the toilets and cage lane were maybe a stumbling block, but hopefully after tonight's meeting, we should be have that one ticked and uh, we should uh, look to be opening soon. Awesome. Thank, thank you very much. And, and for my own part, the only thing I want to add... Um, I had a, a very lovely interlude today. Um, I, 11 o'clock on a Tuesday, I joined the TADS group for a virtual meeting where we support carers and sufferers. And we, we were joined by a lovely gentleman called Carwin, a Welsh gentleman, who gave us a concert uh, using a Welsh harp. And it was a, a very welcome break in what has otherwise been a very busy day. Um, so it, it, it's lovely to see how the groups are adapting to support each other. But other than that, I have nothing else to add. I'm now going to move on to the item I jumped to, which is 85.20, which is reports from county and district councillors. And I'm going to come to you first, Councillor Brain. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, nothing from uh, district um, that you'll obviously not cover when, when it becomes your turn. But um, I, I 
was at scrutiny yesterday, which was looking at the COVID response for children's services and education. Um, it was a very interesting meeting to find out how much Norfolk has put in to try and to help. Um, they are getting good responses. Um, they've done a uh, internet and paper advertising thing um, on the basis of hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil, but they've gone the other way. Um, you know, if you see something or hear something, please report it. Children are vulnerable. They are in a situation where they're, unfortunately, not every family is a good family. So it's really important that if you see, hear, or you, know, you hear that somebody is saying it, just make out and tell people what's going on. So that was quite um, it was quite forthcoming, really, um, about how uh, social services are really working in the children area. Um, going on from there, um, it was really pleasing to be able to report to the committee that um, Drake School in Thetford, um, working with the academy, um, and I believe a couple of other schools in uh, Thetford. I, I can't give you all of their names. I'm, I happen to be a governor on Drake and the Academy, so I know that they're involved. But they've been working together and Drake School managed to get classes open for every year um, from children, you know, nursery right through to year six. Uh, the Academy have taken a lot of the year six children and got them into the Academy. They've given them a block so that they could be self-isolated and a bubble um, so that they could look after each other. And, and as I say, the teachers have gone up with them, which has been incredible. Um, never heard of the uh, schools working together before. So if this is a silver lining from um, COVID, then it's something worthwhile. Um, I did bring up at the meeting that um, one of the things that uh, was was stopping children getting education was lack of IT. Um, the government um, and Norfolk County Council had 180 um, laptops to give out to those who were vulnerable, who had um, uh, you know, a social worker um, and you know, they knew they were vulnerable. Um, I pointed out that there's a lot of difference between officially vulnerable and people who just need help. And I'm pleased to report I've just had the um, head of uh, Drake School on the phone to me this evening when this meeting started to say that Norfolk County Council have found 60 reconditioned laptops that they're going to get to the children of Thetford so their education can be pursued um, and they're working on it so that they can keep them learning between now and the, the, uh, the school summer holidays, uh, which is really good. Um, and uh, I will be sending uh, my thanks to uh, Norfolk IT tomorrow to say what a great job they've done for the town. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Brown. Does anybody have any questions for Councillor Brown? Okay, um, Councillor. Is, is, is the other county councillor speaking? They, they will be working their way around, Mark. Do you have a question for Councillor Brown? No, I've got a general question for all of them at the end. Okay, I'll come back to you then, Mark. Mark, if you do me a favour, could you just put your hand up when you want to speak? Because so, just so you, I can manage the meeting, please. Thank you. Where, where, where'd you go for that? You can either do it the traditional way. And put your hand up on the screen so I can see you, or you can right. put your hand, or you can put your hand up in the chat, in, in the chat box. Okay, thank you, Mark. Um, Councillor Brindle. Uh, I, I think you've given me a chance, haven't you? No, I started with Roy. Roy. Um, I think you'll find Councillor Brindle did an update on the Charles virus. 
Yes, but that was for the outside bodies. This is actually for reports from county and district councils. It's a separate je agenda item. Okay, my apologies. Uh, so, 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 sorry, Mr. Mayor. Thank, thanks, Jenny, for your help. Sorry, Mr. Mayor. Um, I've still got 86 on the screen, so I'm not that, whether that can be shifted from time to time. Um, uh, I haven't got any comments, thank you, Mr. Mayor, for, as, as a district councillor. Thank you, Mike. Councillor Harvey. Hello, Chris. Not at this, not at this time, but I, I might next month. Thank you. Councillor James. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have nothing to add in in addition to the regular email updates that we've been receiving from the leader of Breckland Council. Thank you. And Councillor Jeremy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I look forward to Councillor's question with Ernest. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I have got a, a couple of things I just wanted to share. Um, a couple of bits of good news, really. Um, we spoke last month about the shared use uh, facility for Croxton Road, as in the cycle path stroke pedestrian path. Um, we made our, our views known and we all know it's not uh, as good as we would like, but we're, we're getting something which, uh, uh, as an optimist, I think it's better than nothing. Um, there was some concern that I expressed to County that the start of that work was due to commence on the very first day that the kids went back to school, children rather, went back to school at Fetford Academy. Um, and as we all know, it's quite a, a busy stretch of road at the best of times, let alone that first week. Um, and that has now been put back. So the works are starting week commencing the 14th of September. Um, and I think that will uh, uh, sort of uh, alleviate at least some of the issues um, uh, that would have uh, otherwise occurred during that busy week. So it is going ahead. Um, and it's we commence in the 14th of September. So uh, need to make people aware. Um, the other thing is I just wanted to highlight, I've been doing a bit of digging at Breckland about what support they have available um, for local residents. Um, and I, I will say as a Breckland councillor, I think Breckland have been very good over the last few months uh, in terms of helping local residents and the Inconfidence campaign, um, which uh, they initiated was uh, quick off the mark. So uh, as far as I'm concerned, I've had very regular communication with them um, and uh, you know they have been taking lots of my suggestions on board, which I'm really pleased about. Um, the hardship fund, which they've set up, uh, I just want to read uh, quickly if I can. Um, so it's financial support will be provided to individuals under two grant schemes. The first is an essentials grant, which is up to 50 pounds. Um, under this grant scheme, uh, finance, financial support will be provided for emergency support, such as essential food and medical supplies. And we will support their, those facing difficulty uh, accessing their finance as a result of the coronavirus pandemic. Um, so that's up to £50. And then there's also a hardship grant of up to £300. Uh, under this grant, financial support will be provided to households that require a necessary piece of equipment or emergency repair or similar for those that are financially constrained to do so as a result of coronavirus. So we know there's lots of people affected uh, financially as a result of this. Um, I would urge all town councillors that are not Breckland councillors to liaise with those Breckland councillors to refer people to this scheme. Um, there's £60,000 available for the whole of Breckland and we want to make sure that those Thetford residents that could benefit from this do benefit. That's what the money is there for. So um, if you have individuals that uh, have contacted you, as I say, do liaise with um, Breckland councillors across Thetford. And so we can refer you in and maybe access uh, that support. Um, the last thing I just wanted to mention was um, free school meals, which uh, has been a big issue uh, nationally. And I'm really pleased that um, uh, those children and families that are entitled to free school meals will continue to be supported in the summer holidays. Um, before that, I've actually contacted all schools in Fetford um, and asked them to complete a survey uh, about um, the impact of coronavirus and generally on free school meals and how many people use free school meals um, and what they were planning to do for the summer. Um, so I'm working with uh, County Council colleagues um, to try and get some additional support. Um, the criteria for free school meals is actually very high. It's uh, even though there's quite a few people that benefit, um, you have to be on a very sort of certain criteria to benefit. Um, and as I've always found in, in my life, it's always those families that are just above the eligibility criteria that are the ones that uh, are really disadvantaged because they just fall, fall through the gaps. And um, so I'm working with the schools to see what additional support 
um, can be provided. Um, and by the time we meet at the end of July, I'll hopefully have some more concrete information about that. Um, but uh, all bar free schools, in fact, could come back to me. So I was really pleased about that. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Jeremy. Um, and how could we feed into that process for you? In terms of the schools? Yeah. Yeah, I think if you've got um, some specific examples or suggestions, um, one of the difficulties um, county-wide is uh, one size fits all doesn't work because different schools uh, provide different services. Some provide uh, a cooked uh, meal as an option, some provide uh, food parcels, some provide cash options. Um, so it's a very complex picture across Norfolk. Um, so we're looking at uh, how basically we can facilitate that support through the schools. Um, some of you are governors, so if your school is doing something specific, or if you're from a school that didn't respond to the survey, and um, as I say, free schools didn't, um, uh, you know, we, we want to be making sure that, you know, those children uh, don't miss out just because somebody missed the email or the school, um, uh, you know, didn't go to the right email address or whatever. But uh, um, uh, if people can help with that network of information, that'd be useful. Thank you. I'm, I, I can see I've got at least two councillors with their hands up. I'll just add my little piece and then I'll, I'll open it out if that's okay. Um, so for my part, um, to build upon, I think we're being quite well informed with the, the amount of information coming out across the three tiers uh, of local government. Um, I just want to highlight that uh, as part of the new local plans, the District Council issued advice for de developers and residents when they're submitting planning applications. And that advice is to include the incorporation of bird boxes, bees or swift bricks into housing plans. And the aim is to contribute to Breton's um, um, objectives to boost the biodiversity across the district. We've, we've spoken about it um, a couple of times already tonight about the initiative, the uh, confidence campaign, which is uh, a Breton, South Norfolk and Broaden district um, working collaboratively which is seeking to give our residents confidence to shop safely and we've all seen the hand sanitizer stations floor markings wall sign and branding around the town but i just want to highlight there, there's a key strap in there is the creation of a de dedicated market town liaison officer and that's a named individual an officer leading engagement and support for each local town for the town councils to work with and the community to work with for Fetford, our go-to guy is um, Jack Weaver. Who, uh, I must say, uh, you know, four, four days coming into the post of the GTP manager. The pandemic, we went into lockdown, so it's been quite a baptism of fire for Jack. And um, just on a personal note, I, I think Jack will be somewhat otherwise engaged at the moment because his wife gave birth to a daughter yesterday. So I just want to offer on our behalf, congratulations on the safe arrival of baby Grace. I'm now going to open the floor up. Um, Dennis, I can see you've got your hand up, and I, and I apologise if I've missed it from the previous item, or is it actually for this item? Uh, you no, know, it was for the previous one, but not to worry. Thank Dennis, you. Dennis, you have my apologies that I missed that. Okay. Um, I think um, I've got Councillor Hollis to be followed by Councillor Taylor. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Jeremy, you were saying that the cycle path's going to start. Did you say the 12th or the 14th of September? 14th. 14th. Only I've had a couple of emails from a couple of residents up here about um, when the work was going to start. And I said I, would, I, I wasn't sure. Now, this and the other concerns they showed or they mentioned was the fact that even though the town council showed, you know, it wasn't quite what the town would want for the cycle path that you actually went to um it was reported in the local paper that you said it would could be hazardous for the forum so can i put their minds at rest to say that it won't be hazardous for them Uh, I'm not uh, qualified to give a response. I'd suggest that any road or path is a, is a potential hazard. Um, but if those residents are concerned, uh, if they want to contact me as their county councillor, uh, I can hook them up with the relevant officers from county. Right, OK, thank you. 
<laughs> Councillor Taylor. Yeah, uh, I just wanted to say I spent some time up north recently and the discussion that was gaining momentum was about the number of coronavirus deaths due to all the patients being moved out of the hospitals initially and into the care homes when they actually could have stayed in the hospitals, which were under capacity, or moved into a Nightingale hospital. Lots of momentum on that discussion up north. Now, seeing as we have had some deaths in Norfolk, I'm just wondering amongst the county councillors if there's any data on this from the Norfolk point of view, and can they confirm that this didn't happen in Norfolk? We didn't move our elderly out of the hospitals and into care homes leaving the hospitals under capacity. Have we got any data on that at all from county? That's what I'm trying to find out. Thank you. Um, I'm just going to make a comment before either Councillor Brain or Jeremy attempts to answer that. That's a, a good question and it requires a detailed response. I'm going to, I'm going to suggest when we have a question, just one moment, Mark, please. When we require what is a detailed response, it might initiate a better debate if we give the council we're asking a heads up on the question. But I'll be very surprised if we, we can, you know, they, I'm happy to be surprised, but I'll be surprised they'll be able to answer it as fully as you may like off the cuff. But I'm doing the either gentleman disservice, then I, I stand to be corrected. And I, I now hand over to both gentlemen, or either or. Okay. Uh... Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I will come back to a degree. Um, we, I have uh, been sending to Tina uh, um, Norfolk's um, response each week. We had two um, letters from the leader and Nock um, going out um, as a covert briefing. Most of those had in them the death rate, where they were, um, and it was sent to all town councillors for them to read, um, and then they could come back to either Terry or I, and we could go and find out specific data. Um, I know that they are working now on postcodes um, to try and sort out it down to an even greater degree. Um, I had a report today that um, uh, in Thetford it's been very, very good. Um, if you can say that, you know, death is good, but I mean, it was very, very minimal. And our care homes have done exceptionally well in the town. Um, so it is in the Norfolk briefing and it has been sent out um, as and when. And I will keep sending them out as soon as they arrive. Thank you. And Councillor uh, Jeremy? The only thing I'd add to that is um, uh, I genuinely do like Mark's questions because uh, at least he's asking them and he's interested and uh, he cares. What I would suggest to you, Mark, is um, Norfolk County Council and Breckland um, have various uh, facilities to enable uh, the public and all town councillors to, to raise questions and get more information. Um, Norfolk, for example, has a public question time on cabinet um, and most of the committees. Uh, very rarely is there any questions from the public submitted. Um, so I would, you know, encourage you if you want more data on what Norfolk's doing and what the figures are, do submit them. I, you know, I make full use of that uh, as a councillor. I'm allowed to uh, two per meeting, and I submit two every month. Um, and if you also have questions, I'd urge you to submit them as well. Um, uh, it's right that we hold Norfolk and Breckland to account as Fetford Town councillors, um, and that's what uh, you know several of us do try to do. Thank you. I've got no other hands up, so I'm going to actually um, uh, thank you for all those that contributed to that. Am I happy with that, Chair? Am I all? I, I don't know, Mark. My ESP is not working tonight. I am being facetious there. Thank you. I'm out of your calibre. I thought you'd have come back to me and said, what do you think of that? 
Thank you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move, I, as I say, I thank everyone for their contributions to that. Item 86. It, it, excuse me, Mr Mayor, sorry to interrupt, but um, Councillor Jeremy has his hand up. Sorry, Mr Mayor. Oh, please don't. So, thank you, Town Clerk. Now, I just wanted to make a point because I was in, interested with Councillor Hollis's point earlier about communication from Breckland to the town. Um, I was really disappointed today. I happened to be in conversation with one of the two district councillors in Fetford who are not town councillors. Um, and I was really disappointed that they've received no communication from the town council since the middle of March. We have an agenda item which includes reports from county and district councillors, but at least two of our Breckland representatives aren't included in the format that we've now adopted for full councils. Uh, they've not been approached to provide written reports or, or facilitated to provide verbal reports. Um, and I think it goes two ways. You know, if we want to bash Breckland for poor communication, um, we need to make sure our own house is in order. So I just wanted to relay that. Uh, there's two people who want to engage with the town council and improve that communication uh, back and forth. And it's not happening at the moment. Well, just on that point, I, I was um, elected as a district councillor and missed on town council, the first time I stood for election. And I had to sit in the cheap seats and give my report. So I welcome giving uh, the two district councillors that don't sit on the town council the same opportunity. Councillor Wright. No, uh, it's nice to hear, but I think it's slightly wrong. We do have the mechanism. The, the item is there for um, district and county councillors. So even though they may not be town councillors, they're still able to speak at that point. And that was included there many years ago to allow that matter to, to take place. Um, because of the way we're doing it virtually, it may be we have to ask them to submit them um, a written report, um, but it would be nice to have that as a standing item, asking them when the pack goes out, if they've got any um, comments to make. I've got Councillor James, and then I, I will look to move on. That's okay. At risk of not disappointing everybody, standing order 24A and B clearly gives the mechanism of how we do it so i think yeah, we play by the rules here thank you thank you and i and i will make a point of reaching out to both councillors to facilitate that for our next meeting thank you and uh i, I know the town clerk is uh, happy to receive any reports that they, they they wish to send in so we are going to move on to item 8620 which is the, the reopening of the public toilets. Um, I'm looking to the working group to lead. Um, do you have somebody who's going to lead in a month? We had um, the town clerk involved, Tina Cunnell, our deputy town clerk, Ros Barnett, who was also the uh, officer for the ALP uh, committee, Councillor Brain, then um, Jeremy and Harvey. Oh, is that a bit of soothing background music? Lovely. Um, <laughs> could, could I, um, um, yes, it was like a bit of soothing music. Um, did any of the councillors want to lead on this? I'm happy if you want to introduce it, Town Clerk. The uh, proposal that we arrived at was circulated, so hopefully everybody's had a chance to read it. Mm -hmm. Mr Chairman, uh, Councillor Burnett, uh, as I'm not receiving any emails, I haven't seen any of this, but I would like to say that, as a personal opinion, I think that the sooner we can get the public toilets open, the better, because I think the general public really well, would like to see the toilets open, if it's possible. Can, can, Councillor Burnett, what I'm going to suggest, let's hear the proposal, and then we can comment, because then we'll be fully armed. Do you want me to make a proposal? No, you, I, you need to know what it is first. I'm going to ask Councillor Jeremy to present the work, the report from the working group, and the debate will flow from there. But thank you for your enthusiasm. Oh, I'm assuming you. you don't want to spend a penny now. Oh, no, no. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, I wasn't aware, Mr. Mayor, that uh, everyone had, uh, not everyone had seen the proposal. So, if you like, um, and obviously the public wouldn't have seen it either. So, if I read from um, the conclusion that we arrived at as a working group, uh, and then we can take it from there. 
Um, so the proposal would be to reopen Cage Lane toilets as soon as practically possible and operate on a trial basis until the 4th of July 2020. Uh, point two, all Bedford Town Council toilets to then reopen from 10 till 4 from the 4th of July onwards. Toilets will be deep cleaned prior to reopening and then the toilets will be cleaned frequently throughout each day. Toilets to be reopened uh, subject to cleaning operatives being available, suitable training and people provided. New signage is installed and once a deep clean has taken place in advance. Two operatives will be employed covering a total of 42 hours per week for three months from the 4th of July. It is anticipated that one will cover Monday to Friday and the other will complete Saturdays and Sundays but the allocation of hours uh, will be left to the relevant organisation to determine. Bedford Town Council has budgeted for 19.5 hours a week of cleaning per week in its annual budget. The additional hours per week of cleaning for the three months uh, will be met from savings achieved from the period of closure, plus any other, un other underspend in the overall staff budget. Additional, additional expenditure will also be needed to support improved signage, additional hand sanitising stations and PPE costs. The proposal would be for the council to consent to the town clerk to utilise budgets as necessary to support this additional expenditure. The toilets will be cleaned as frequently as possible throughout their opening hours and the operatives will be tasked with prioritising the cleaning of toilets. Once the council has assessed the level of toilet use and ensured that the toilets are cleaned to a safe standard, it could be that during quieter times the operative will support the cleaning of public spaces, e.g. King Street Square, Market Square, etc., to support the town centre and retailers in conjunction with the Breckland Council in Confidence campaign. This may include, for example, the, the wiping and cleaning of street furniture to provide visual, visible reassurances about cleanliness to the public. As an additional control measure, senior Fetford Town Council staff will be asked to undertake regular spot checks to ensure the standard of cleanliness is up to the required standard post-COVID and check that the toilets are not being abused. Breckland Council will be approached formally and asked for a financial contribution towards the cost of reopening the toilets and the enhanced cleaning regime which supports the Inconfidence campaign. And then lastly, during the three month period, Fetford Town Council staff produce an options appraisal for councillors exploring the costs and benefits of employing staff directly to provide this service in the long term, outsourcing to a private contractor or continuing with the previous arrangement with a local firm. An assessment will take place during the three-month period to determine the level of staffing required, the emerging situation post-COVID and health and safety considerations. To help gauge the cost of providing the service, the Council will put the service out to tender to help identify who may be interested in providing the service, then compare this against the other options. So in short, it's about getting the Cage Lane ones open ASAP, uh, followed by the other two toilets uh, from the 4th of July, Given the 4th of July is this Saturday, I suspect all three may be uh, opened uh, from the 4th of July, July or as soon as possible after that point. Um, but increasing the regular cleaning from 19 and a half hours a week to 42, recognising that we're going to have to have much more uh, thorough uh, cleaning services provided uh, in a sort of post-COVID world to protect the public. Um, and this is the, uh, in my view, the quickest way and easiest way to get the toilets open for that three month period. Thank you very much, um, Terry. Um, I'm going to open it out for um, councillors to make comments. Councillor Taylor has his hands up. Thank you. And, and then I have Chris Harvey. Um, Councillor Taylor. Yeah, I, uh, I missed the last meeting because I was at home. On the way, what I decided to do is every time I went into the... Uh, service station lose is have a look at what their regime was and also when it was at home have a look at what the supermarkets the supermarkets were doing with the toilets this was to give me some sort of yardstick or baseline to uh, look at it from you know I, i'm just wondering if the if the working group have, have actually looked at it from that point of view i've caught up the paperwork since i've got back as i've been busy and i just want to say uh i was looking at roger's uh, information that she put out specifically on the 26th of June by email, which was information about running of public toilets, government document 531, which was published on May the 11th. That information has now been updated on the 24th of June. 
and uh, I've been studying paragraph 114 and the word is guidance, not law. Now, what it says in the updated document, I'm wondering if the uh, working group have seen this. It actually says on the on the government website, councils are responsible for public toilets and the decision to open them is up to them. It then says if you, the public, need to use any of these facilities, you shall practice social distancing and good hygiene, i.e. washing hands thoroughly. Now, I, I read into that, that the government advice is actually putting the onus onto the individual to carry out the distancing and hygiene. Now, if the onus is going on the individual, what scope does that give us to not spend too much money and not be overzealous in how we administrate the opening of the toilets? Does that make sense to what I've just said? Thank you. Thank you. I don't know um, if anybody from the working group would like to pick that up. Um, um, Councillor Harvey has his Councillor Harvey has his hand up. Chris. Yeah, yeah. My take, as you know, is from the health and safety point of view. We had a really good discussion on the health and safety issues, disposal of the PPE keeping the hazardous stuff safe and away from people, making sure that the people who are going in to double check the cleaners were wearing the proper PPE. The, the, of course, yet again, the issue, we had an issue with, with air dryers at the beginning. We were told at the beginning they weren't safe. Now that has changed. They're now telling us that air dryers are safe. I would like to see st sanitizing stations outside the public toilets. But, yes. You know, apart from the health and safety wise, we did cover a fair amount, and most of the stuff that we covered was was really good and well done. I would like to see a, a method statement from what Ross has come out with the two quote sheets. He's come out to, to today, though. Know. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Wright. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'd just like to congratulate the working group on getting to a, a proposal in quite short term. Um, we were very conscious we wanted to get the toilets open as soon as possible and, and it's nice to see that that's come forward tonight and hopefully we'll be able to make a decision. In terms of our council makeup, I'm sure there are people at either end of the spectrum wanting to do a completely overzealous job and others just want a little of polish. But I think we've probably got the ideal measure here of a, a three month, keep it really tight and then hopefully we can revisit that um, and then get possibly have our own staff doing it with a reduced regime that may be necessary but I think for confidence sake we probably do need to go for this overzealous way for three months uh, and get it done and I hope that we can go to the vote as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank you Councillor Wright. Um, Mr. Me well, Sorry um, you have um, Councillor Brame and then Councillor Taylor. Yes uh, I was just about to go to Councillor Brame. <laughs> Councillor Brame. Thank you Mr Mayor. Yeah, um, I, I can see where everybody is coming from. Um, as Chris has said about the health and safety, uh, one of our main concerns has got to be our staff or the people that we employ. So we do have to look at it from this, make sure that our people are safe, which then will make sure that the visitors to the town are safe. Um, the one thing that we did mention at the working group was that it might be a, a nice idea if we could get some um, hand or some backpack um, sprayers for the, the town centre so that uh, you know when the cleaners are walking between the two they can be seen to do something which will build confidence. Um, I think that you know most of the public toilet opening people have said, you know, hand sanitizers um, so that you can do that on the way out to make sure that you are you know, clean when you leave, because you have to expect that any person that went before you could unfortunately be um, ill um, and not know it or carrying this, this terrible virus. Um, so as long as we're keeping our staff safe, which both of these um, proposals were very, very good. We're keeping the people safe because we've got enough cleaning um, in three months time. Hopefully, as Stuart says, we can come down a little bit. But um, I think we need to be 
slightly not overzealous, but we need to know that it's clean. We've had very few um, cases here. Um, I don't want to see it going up, and I certainly don't want to see it being blamed on the fact that we didn't clean the toilets well enough. Councillor Taylor. Yeah, I was the first to publicly moan about the toilets not being open. Uh, but what I'm asking the council to do at the minute is to apply some common sense uh, and looking at the money aspect of it. Now, you know, the latest, we're, what we're doing here is we're overlaying a thick dollop of health and safety, which will cost us a lot of money. When I think we need to balance that against legislation, legislation from the government. And I'll just remind you, if you, the public, need to use any of these facilities, you should practice social distancing. Now, they're all experts at that now after Tesco's and Sainsbury. And good hygiene, i.e. wash your hands thoroughly. Now, if, we, if we're doing a more enhanced clean of the toilets that we normally do, and we're pro providing stuff for them to clean the hands with, we're all doing the social distancing anyway. Let's not be overzealous with what we do and get the toilet open. Okay. Councillor uh, James. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, a couple of points that I'd like to raise, actually, please. Um, Council already has consented via financial regulations adopted in October 2019. For those of you who avidly read them, they're 4.2 and 4.3 in terms of utilising budgets away from budget lines. The resolution by this council was to establish a working group with a view to open ca opening cage lane toilets as quickly and safely as possible. I would like a definition of frequently as it's used repeatedly, but it's not specified. Councillor Jeremy was keen to, and I quote, explore and confirm how they are going to be operated in reference to the toilets. How does this paper confirm the operation without risk assessments and method statements? In this confirmation, where is the reference to the current guidance, and I mindfully use Councillor Taylor's ter uh, term, guidance, in relation to cleaning toilets? I'd also like to ask where are the considerations for social distancing, queue management, and a visual, visible cleaning schedule to reassure the public that we actually care about their well-being and health? The brief was to reopen cage lane toilets as quickly and as safely as possible. Not all toilets. I would actually suggest that this proposal offers less to the council to base their decision on than that which was previously presented. And given Councillor Jeremy's insistence on having, and I quote again, the mechanics on how it might work, it would appear that the working group has failed to deliver any of the how that was so integral to the argument last week for a working group. Thank you. Oh, oh, Mark, I've got your hand up again. Yes. And I've, I've also got the town clerk. To, one moment, Mark. And I've also got the town clerk as well to follow. Where well, you go, Mark? Yeah, uh, can, uh, trying to stop a bit of infighting there, but it, the legislation, from what I'm seeing, is not law; it's guidance now. And I keep saying it, the, it's guidance. And it's putting the onus on the public to use common sense. Now, going into Sainsbury's and Tesco's in our town, their toilets have been open through, throughout. One went on to an hourly cleaning uh, regime and one, one went on to a two hourly cleaning regime. Obviously, with the cubicles, there was no problem. The men's urinals, one three, I'm sorry to talk like this, but one, one three man urinal in one of the local supermarkets stayed open throughout with, with a two hour cleaning regime of somebody just going in and doing a quick wipe down. And there's been no problems at Tesco's or Sainsbury's. So in effect, they've set the president and we should be looking at them. Let's get all our toilets open. Let's have a bit of common sense. The public know what they're doing, but they are. everybody's coming to me. I'm catching and peeing all over this town. And they're all saying we've got nowhere else to go. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Barreto. Thank you, Shinner. Uh, just a couple of points, really. Um, I wasn't there on the working group, and that's because on Fridays, um, I'm, I'm during the week, and mostly Fridays, I'm very busy with the food as I think you know. But I do want to extend my thanks to those that actually took the time to look into this in such a short notice. Um, I, 
the figure supporters for the working group to come up with, with a solution, but given the, the time frame and, and the amount of information and the changing guidelines, like Councillor James says, that are constantly shifting and changing because there's always something new coming in, coming out every day uh, about what to do and how to do it safely. Um, it, it, I can imagine it's hard for any of the councillors, particularly for the working group, to come up with um, a, 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 an assessment or, or a, a lineup of, of items that might not have to change it tomorrow or the day after. So I'm sure they're doing their best. Um, in regards to the toilets, um, if you look into the fact that from the 4th, all businesses will be open, most a lot of the people, including a lot of government officials, are in favour of opening the toilets and think they are required as a public service to those for people that comes out and uh, in order for them to shop and to, to come to connect, this is this is a service is a public service we need to provide so the sooner we do it the better i could agree with councillor wright that uh, you know it's, it's it's not so much about the petty detail of how we do it is how we get it done as soon as possible because it is a public service and we ought to do it um also, I, I I recall having received an email yes uh, today from the from the I would believe there was a clerk that forwarded it where there's two MPs that make a, a letter of appeal um, for all councils to consider opening the toilet precisely because of the opening of the businesses and this is an ancillary service that needs to be provided. So there's a lot of push for those toilets to be open. My concern is rather than arguing about how you know all the details of the assessments have done or not. Be done. I'm sure little bits and little details can be worked if there's the will to do so, rather than be critical about all the, the work that's already been done by those that put themselves forward to the time to do it. But thank you, Chair. Thank you. I've got Councillor Jeremy, then Councillor Brown. Thank you, Chairman. I'm, I'm happy to respond to a couple of those points. Um, I think we'll all admit the last few months has been incredibly fast moving and things have been changing uh, weekly, if not daily. When we met last Monday, um, we didn't know that there was going to be quite a significant push, I think, from government and elsewhere to get public toilets reopened. We thought we would be going against the grain, if you like, by opening them uh, uh, as soon as we could. Um, uh, and therefore we were you know, acting, I think, uh, with sort of trepidation. It's been really clear over the last week um, that we are now being actively encouraged to get them open as soon as possible. Um, the coverage which we are proposing is to provide a uh, a cleaner, an operative, or however you want to describe them, for every hour that the toilets are open. So we're proposing they're open from 10 till 4, um, seven days a week, and for the entirety of that time, they will be available to undertake cleaning. Um, so hopefully that goes some way to answering uh, Councillor James's uh, queries there. They will be cleaned as frequently as necessary. If we have every single person in Fetford uses them uh, as they should be, uh, they'll have uh, quite a lot of time on their hands, I should think, our cleaner. Um, but we know that's not the case. And it's very difficult to, to put, a, uh, put a figure on um, how often uh, they'll need to be cleaning. Uh, I'm happy that 42 hours a week um, might be overkill, but we've built into that the fact that they can help with the wider effort to give confidence in the town centre. I'm really pleased to see that in there. We want a visible uh, response over the next three months, because this is only a three month proposal um, uh, for, to, to sort of you know, take us out post COVID. In truth, if we'd have gone with the proposal last week, uh, we it would have been completely unworkable. Uh, we would have only opened one toilet um, and people would have to book uh, to go to the loo by telephone. It just wasn't workable. What if people didn't have the telephone? What if somebody wasn't available to let them in? Um, so as much as I wanted to make a decision last Monday, we just didn't have that option in front of us that we could vote on. And, and that's why we arrived at where we did. Um, and also, I think even if we had voted last Monday to accept the proposal, um, um, I don't think the toilets would be open now, because as we'll probably move on to hopefully in a minute, the previous arrangement uh, using a, a local agency isn't even possible to go back to the person that was previously cleaning our toilets because things have moved on. Um, so we just weren't in a position to, to, to get them open that quickly. Um, you know, I still don't know if we've even started to order the, uh, the signage and stuff and the hand sanitizer and stuff um, that we're going to be needing. So I don't think um, uh, we'll be in a position for the 4th of July, but the, the town clerk might want to comment on that. Um, the final point is about cost. This is going to cost more than what was budgeted. 
Um, but bear in mind, we've uh, saved uh, over £3,000 by having the toilets closed for the last few months, um, which can go towards it. Um, and I think it's right for the next three months to help give people confidence in using our toilets, help give people confidence to go into the town centre, um, that we put a bit of extra money into this to make sure the job's done properly um, and we protect the public as far as we possibly can. And that's why, as I say, I'm happy to uh, uh, to go with the proposal. Um, I think you might have some other speakers, Chair, but um, I'm quite happy to, to make the proposal, although I have got a couple of amendments um, to what was written based on the further email that came out from uh, the Deputy Town Clerk today um, so I'm happy to go through those changes if you want to take other speakers first. Okay well from what I can see from the screen I've got Councillor Brain and then the Deputy Clerk Ros Barnett would like to come in. Uh, I suspect she's specifically going to ask the, your operational question so I'll take Councillor Brain and then Councillor Barnett and then on the basis that I don't have any other speakers I'll come back to you for the proposal. Mm -hmm. Oh, I have one other speak. So before I come back to you, I have Councillor James uh, who will comment. So um, over to you, Councillor Brown. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm not sure that uh, our Deputy Town Clerk will thank being called a councillor or take it as a promotion. Uh, Can I call her a councillor? <laughs> yes, but never well, mind. Uh, she's, got more sense. <laughs> she's got more sense. Uh, I, I must admit that the only thing with the proposal that I, I'm not that keen on is that when we, we discussed it, we had hoped to be able to get it open sort of almost immediately after our working group. And the reason for this was that we needed to have the one place open so that we could test the health and safety. Um, make sure that the bins for disposal of PPE were big enough um, to make sure that, you know, that amount of cleaning would be sufficient um, to make sure that the staff were happy and safe in, in what they were doing and to give them a little bit of training. Um, unfortunately, um, as I think Terry has said, you know, we, we hadn't got all the bits and pieces in place. Um, but I think that would have answered Councillor James's um, questions. You know, where was the risk assessment? Well, it would have been being done as we speak, um, but unfortunately we haven't. So whether, as Terry has said, to say that um, we will do it on the 4th of July, if we haven't got enough sanitizers, I don't know whether we could grab one from um, Breckland immediately to put in front of um, you know, Cage Lane. Um, but that was the idea to try and do a health and safety, see how many people were using it and, and take it from there. Um, I understand from the from the Deputy Town Clerk that uh, she's got everything in place and we are ready to go um, and be able to do some health and safety checks before we commit ourselves that we've got it right. Can I invite, that's a really timely, can I invite our new councillor, the Deputy Clerk? Councillor, <laughs> what's busted on you, please? No, no, don't make me a councillor. I have to, <laughs> to make the decision. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, like yeah, um, so I've set out the two costs for the different uh, cleaning options based on the proposal at the moment. One of them was his contractor, um, which is the more expensive one. And the other one is a combination of a personnel contractor and our own staff. Um, if we went, if we were to go with the more expensive of those two proposals um, for the three month period, it what would work out about £600 more than we would normally spend based on the fact we've actually been closed for a little while. So I just wanted to put that in, into context. Um, the staff have been in to the toilets, they've all been deep cleaned. Um, we have got some signage up, we've got some signage ready to go in. Uh, we haven't ordered the hand sanitizers at the moment, although there is a debate um, about hand, hand sanitizers. If you've got access to soap and water and you're able to wash your hands at the appropriate amount of time and you then don't touch anything, um, maybe hand sanitizers but well there is an argument that hand sanitizers are not needed if you've got soap and water um 
so and it, and we have put hooks on the doors so that people can but it might be that outside cage lane in the bus station it would be better to have a, um, a hand sanitizer thank you um i've got in this order and then i'm sorry to it, sorry it's um councillor james no councillor I, 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 I can just see that and i i, I thought i see councillor hodginson's hand go up dave did i see your hand go up yeah, I clicked the wrong button, so that's fine. Okay, so it's Councillor James Crawford and, and Taylor. And Taylor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and and thank you, Councillor Jeremy, because you know that is what we're here to do: to challenge, to organise, and support. So thank you for your responses. Um, in in that tone, Councillor Taylor has stated how inspired he's been um, by our supermarkets and their and stated the good practice that they've carried out in terms of their cleaning regimes, both two hourly and one hourly. Um, I hope that Councillor Jeremy might uh, amend the proposal to include that kind of schedule so that you know, we, we can inspire the same sort of confidence that Councillor Taylor has, has had inspired by the supermarkets, please. Thank you, Councillor James. Councillor Crawford. Oh, hello, yes. Um, I, I'm greatly concerned about opening these toilets. We need to open them as soon as possible. Health and safety is very uh, uh, important in this situation. But, I mean, on a personal matter, there's no way I'm going to be able to go downtown and shop without having the toilets open. Uh, that's my personal view. Um, being 70 years old and... Uh, you know, very much needing the toilet. I, I get to come out on the fourth is my end of my lockdown. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to be able to use the town centre until we do open them. So my plea is let's just get them open soon as safely as we can for both our staff and the public. Thank you. Council Taylor. Yes, I'd just like to come back uh, about Councillor Brame's uh, complete overkill and Councillor James and his comments about the schedule. That schedule that they were working to in the supermarkets is in effect null and void because we've now got new guidance from government, not law guidance. And I'll just say it again. The guidance is if you, the public, need to use any of these facilities, you should practice social distancing that's down to three feet at the minute and good hygiene, i.e. washing hands. That is the guidance. Not what they were doing, what they should be doing now. Thank you. Councillor Barreto. Thank you, Chair. Um, just a quick point. Um, that yes, We did mention initially um, about opening one of the toilets and that's before the working group worked on it, come up with the, come up with the budget and... and uh, you know, an operational scheme to, to open all the toilets. And that was because the guidance changed and everything changed very quickly, which I appreciate. Um, but we we have really to move on and to continue you know, those toilets ASAP with all the safety as required, even if that costs a bit more. I understand um, that our uh, deputy uh, clerk mentioned that the difference in the budget between what would be expected before and what is expected to spend um, above just for you know hiring or keeping the coils clean and for that standard with safety that is required for all the the the, the people that are, that uses the toilets um, is not a huge amount as difference and if if that amount means that people will be safe I'm more than happy to go for than a in approve, uh, approve something of the sorts. Um, we do have to be mindful that we not, by, our, by opening the high street and instill confidence, which is a confidence campaign, in people to actually go out and use the services, we have to be mindful about the whole community. We can't forget the elderly, we can't forget those with right. necessities for the toilets, we can't forget specifically families with small children will require the toilet facilities more regularly if they're out with their family shopping. Um, and, and for those to come out and to do and to carry on their business and to feel comfortable about the they have to have the facilities open. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm just, uh, before I move on to the next speaker, which is Councillor James, I'm just going to make an observation, actually. The decision tonight for us, strategically, is whether we open the toilets or not. And there's a proposal to that aim. 
operationally to make sure we comply with health and safety, meet the latest guidance. That's the role of the officers. And we do actually need to trust the officers and the contractors to do their job. Councillor James. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, ultimately, given your statement, my comment is null and void, but I would like to draw the councillor's attention to it because Councillor Taylor is absolutely right. It is guidance um, and he has no doubt read the visitor economy guidance working safely during COVID coronavirus, section 5.3.1, which deals with toilets because I am that sad. I do have it printed. And it does recommend putting up a visible clean keep it up to date and visible. And I think yeah, we, we are talking about confidence here and we want to give people the confidence that we have done what is reasonable, which is actually the legal requirement in keeping them safe. Reasonable. And I believe a clean schedule on an hourly or two hourly as deemed appropriate as per the risk assessments and method statements that the officers will come up with is the reasonable approach. Thank you. Thank you. Mr Chairman, Mr. Councillor no, Burnett, no, no, may no, I no. speak? Sorry, who was that? Uh, it's, it's Councillor Burnett. Can I speak? Because I can't sit me out. That's no one can see it. I will come to you in a moment. What I will say to people is we are now beginning to machinate similar or same points. So I'm, I'm, I would look to move that we actually make a decision in a timely manner. Yeah, one, moment, insist. one moment, Mark. It would be helpful if you don't interrupt and allow the speaker to speak. So if you could put your hand up so I can bring you in when it's relevant, that would be appreciated. Um, so, Councillor Burnett. Yeah, what I would like to say was is that the, the thing the councillor has to remember is that the whole point of opening the actual toilets is for the benefit of the general public coming down and using the shops now they're open. They must bear in mind that on the 4th of July, all the hotels and pubs in Bedford will also be open, and they do have toilets. So that will also help in regards to people who know there's somewhere in town where they can go to the toilet, even if all the toilets that the council actually operate are not open. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Taylor, then I have uh, the town clerk who wishes to speak, and then hopefully I'm going to come to you, Councillor Jeremy, uh, Jeremy, for your proposal. Well, I'm, uh, I'm really really getting frustrated with the overkill here. I, uh, Councillor James is talking about putting sheets on the wall with cleaning times. Now, they weren't, they were not up in the major supermarkets when the crisis was, was at its height. Now, all of a sudden, everything is starting to wane. And we've got Councillor James talking about putting up bits of paper on the wall with cleaning regimes. It's complete overkill. The guidance I've looked at, unless you've got different than mine, is just a bit of common sense Nothing on the wall talking about regimes. Let's get the toilet talk with a bit of common sense and will some of the councillors stop faffing about with overkill? Thank you. Tina. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, what I'd like to talk about for the um, councillors' consideration is um, operational resilience. And by that, I am saying that um, one of the options is for us uh, to contract as opposed to having it as a combination of staff and um, and of a contractor. For resilience purposes, for leave, for sickness, for if the contractor goes sick, and we would have to um, actually support that. Um, but for more money, we are completely supported by the contractor. Um, we are often picking up other work that we do. Um, staff are still doing um, prescription, social prescribing, emergency food boxes as well. So um, from an operational point of view, I think um, I would be more content if we know exactly where we stand every day and that we're not doing um, last minute dot com because we've got a phone call to say that people aren't available. And so I would ask that the councillors um, consider that. I think we'll produce a, a higher um, spec of work um, and there'll be consistency then from the contractor as well. 
So I think that would be important in maintaining standards required. Um, so I, I'm just asking that councillors please consider that um, when looking at the situation. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Jeremy. Can I invite you to um, make the proposal, please? Yeah, of course. Uh, I'm uh, desperately trying to read between doodles and notes um, because uh, I'm trying. I'll try and make a proposal that incorporates what the town clerk's just said and also what Councillor James has just said. Um, but if I read um, as a uh, foundation the proposal that was circulated, um, I will email you this, Chris, as well, with it's approved. Um, so you don't have to uh, busily write this down. <laughs> yeah. But what I would propose would be to delete um, the three lines of point one, because I think they've been superseded now anyway. Um, and then for the proposal to start, Bedford Town Council consents to all Bedford Town Council toilets reopening from 10 till 4 from the 4th of July using a contractor appointed by the town clerk. Uh, da, 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 da. And then the rest of that remains the same. Um, and then point three on line four to delete um, the reference to the cost. So the new sentence would read the additional 22.5 hours per week of cleaning uh, for, for three months. So you delete reference to the cost because we know that the cost has changed. And then lastly, on the final sentence on three, uh, council content, um, oh, sorry. Um, uh, add after PPE costs record of cleaning frequency to be kept publicly displayed and then stored. And I think that's part of our due diligence and evidence base that we are uh, being attentive to health and safety. Um, and then add to the end of that sentence uh, consent to, to, for the three month period. Uh, so just to sort of confirm that it's for a three month period and then the rest to remain the same. And hopefully that basically gets all three toilets open using a contractor for a three month period. And we're not desperately over budget. Thank you. And can I take a second of that proposal? I'll second yeah, that, Dave Hodgkinson. So, thank, thank you, David. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And that leaves Chris, um, you to work your magic, please. Certainly. Here we go. Councillor Beretta. Four. Thank you. Councillor Brain. Councillor Brain. Should we come back to Brain? I'll, I'll come. He's gone to the low. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'll, I'll come back to Roy Brain at the end. Councillor Brindle. With many thanks indeed to the working party, I'm in favour. Thank you. Councillor Burnett. Four. Thank you. Councillor Canham. Agreed. Thank you. Councillor Crawford. At last, four. Thank you. Councillor Harvey. Four. Thank you. Councillor Hodgkinson. Four. Councillor Hollis. Against. Thank you. Councillor James. Four. Thank you. Councillor Jeremy. Four. Councillor uh, Taylor. Yes. Councillor Wright. Four. Okay, so the, 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 the cap. Oh, is, is Roy Brain back in the house? Okay, well, uh, well, everybody that was asked was for it was one. Uh, hey, oh, well, I'm here. Thank you. I've, I've, I've been in the house all the time, Chris, but I couldn't unmute it. <laughs> Didn't want to know. Yes, I would agree. Thank you. So, um, uh, all the councillors are for, with one against at the moment. Thank you. Thank you. And to um, Tina, can, can I be so bold to push you on a timeline? Sort of um, if, I can, if I can just get Ros online as well, I think Ros, we might be able to manage something tomorrow. Yeah. That is excellent. Yeah. That is excellent. Yeah. And, well, and I, um, We'll, we'll start the process tomorrow. Hopefully, um, um, I'll need to speak to Ros offline, but we should hopefully have at least one set of the toilets open tomorrow. And I just want to yeah. congratulate all members of the uh, the working group on a good piece of work uh, delivered in a timely manner. Yeah, yeah.
Yeah. So well done, guys. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, Chris, it's actually one minute to nine. I yes, do I believe, to say. So we, we're going to need to suspend uh, standing orders. Yeah, I'll record that. Then. Thank you. In, Thank um, you. In favour. Can, can I just say that um, before I'm going to jump in because I can see Councillor James shaking her head um, to say that we're not actually counselling uh, counselling standing orders just one of them and I'm sure that Councillor James has the reference for us if she hasn't um, actually remembered it Suspended I'm sorry, I'm sad it's 3cc Thank you <laughs> All I can say who needs Google or Alexa when you've got Councillor James? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jane. Um, so we move on to item 87 stroke 20, which is the uh, the items that fit for the economic recovery. I'm going to hand over to you, Tina. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So um, recently, uh, Breckland's leader called a meeting of um, the Market Town uh, mayors, deputy mayors, and chairs, which we attended. And it was to start organising a hive mind about how to bring confidence back into the towns, how to get people back using uh, particularly recreational facilities, getting people into the shops and um, boosting confidence, hence the confidence project. So um, there was ideas were bandied around then, and then they asked um, us to work with our local Breckland representatives. We have three officers that we work with here in Thetford to discuss the art of the possible about how we as a town council could contribute to that. So um, the um, mayor sent out an email uh, asking people for their comments and councillors kindly um, responded by sending those back in, which were fed back to the leader. And, um, and we've been looking on uh, how we as a town council could possibly support this. What Breckland were looking at was us um, being prepared to allow businesses to use our um, our marketplace as a plaza so that um, the businesses on the uh, surrounding the market square who were hospitality businesses could use it to socially distance um, tables and chairs thus allowing them to uh, you know operate start to operate again so uh, we've been looking at this and one of the issues that we've been trying to resolve is uh, the fact that we have a PSPO in our town, in the town centre. So I have been talking to Breckland and the police about that as a way to provide a workable and safe solution um, so that we can promote that. So what we were looking at, if the councillors would agree to that, is we were looking at hosting two businesses on marketplace we were very conscious about not um, disrupting the market um, because we have just got the market back and running and we didn't want to disrupt our traders or the people who were so keen to get back to using the market therefore um, working with the offices we looked at different configurations of how we could fit everybody on and what we were looking at is on a Tuesday and a Saturday, the three um, traditional larger market stalls would stay on the market and the two other businesses would be allowed tables and chairs. One wants four tables and chairs and one wants 10 tables and chairs and the 10 is the 30 seat. And so we have the room to put everybody um, in that space with the correct social distancing if we have those two businesses and the three larger markets. What we would then do was to host the gazebo market stores down on the lower market place. And that, that's where we would also put the Guildhall tea room. Um, uh, but our Guildhall tea room, we can't um, manage for the fourth because following tonight, if we put an order in, then it won't actually arrive until the Monday. 
and therefore we wouldn't be looking at opening hours until next week's market. Mm -hmm. So that's what we were looking at potentially doing. Um, and as I was saying about the PSPO, there were cer certain things that would have to be put into place um, that we would check with the other the two businesses. And it was really important that staff would know who their customers were and that they uh, it's one of the things that they need to take names and addresses. They would be responsible for their own tables and chairs so they could be cleaned appropriately. Movement would be controlled between the areas so that they knew who their customers were and furniture was not being shared between organisations. They would have to have security, and this is actually a licensing requirement, and um, the police um, will be offered to be able to offer more advice on that should they need it. Um, and secure the, so the security can manage smaller areas more effectively, and they would be able to monitor if people were bringing alcohol into the area. Patrons consuming alcohol in the plaza would have their orders taken and would be served at their seated table and would not be allowed to enter the venue to bring alcohol out, only to use the toilets. This would allow the venues to control the social distancing within their premises and to stop people drifting in and out. So that's where, where, where we've been looking at what we can do to um, assist this. However, um, we are looking at a steer from the councillors as to whether you are happy for us to get these businesses to sign one of our open spaces usage um, because obviously they would need to have risk assessments, insurance, updated licensing. Um, all those things would need to be presented um, and it would be signing off those things using our normal forms. So um, I, I'm just looking at Councillor Harvey's would be drink in plastic glasses. Um, to answer that, Councillor Harvey, I don't know because I haven't seen their risk assessments yet. However, usually we're only allowed to issue um, drinks in plastic glasses outside anyway. So I would say um, yes. And also we would need a means to put all the waste because it would have to be disposable plates and stuff in the well and um, so the businesses not us the businesses would need somewhere to keep their waste as well but that's really um our part is to provide the space and to allow the market to continue to thrive um and it would be the business's responsibility to meet all the necessary requirements so tina so just before I open up, because I've, I can see I've got at least three hands up, just to clarify for, 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 for councillors, what's the ask? The so, ask is that we um, give permission to these businesses to use our marketplace as a licensed outside area um, on, on the conditions that they produce the necessary information so that they can continue to work between the PS, within the PSPO. And we, temp, I'm, from that I'm reading, that we temporarily relocate a part of the market to support the hospitality sector coming back online. Yes. Fantastic. I've got um, Councillor James. Oh, no, I've got Councillor Crawford first. Do apologise. Councillor James and then Councillor Brain. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, my uh, laptop thing, whatever it is, um, has now told me the meeting's at an end and it's gone black. So I can't see anything anymore. Um, but I'm glad you can still hear and I can still hear. Um, uh, the, my worry is I, I'm in support. I think we need to support the uh, uh, our, our, our local pubs and things because of the... Uh, Oh, I'll, I'll come back to, I, I hope he's okay. Uh, oh, it says no. With us ending up with a cough at the end of it as a town council, because there is going to be more waste uh, left around, even if the pubs are off to clean up. I, I have an idea. And who's going to put the tables away and, and out again every day? 
So those are my two questions. Thank you. If I could come back, please, Mr. Mayor. Yeah. Um, that would be the responsibility of the businesses and not the council. And they would be responsible for their waste as well. Um, and I have no doubt the environmental health and licensing would be coming to visit to ensure that everything is in place. Yeah, yeah thank you. Can I uh, return that question, please, for a minute? Um, the I still have concern. I, I, I have an idea we're going to end up having to check those areas every day. And that's going to mean more work for our council. Because if we don't inspect the areas, how do we know that they are obeying the rules and regs? Um, we, we tend to do a walk around anyway, the staff, um, but we will, we will emphasize that the onus is on the businesses because they will have the license for those areas. Thank you. Councillor James. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, is this a one-time offer um, event or are we looking at ongoing because I'm very mindful that we've reduced if it's ongoing we've reduced car parking capacity within the town in terms of the short stay areas where we've widened footpaths to enable people to walk you know and socially distance um, to take the marketplace out of the equation on non-market days concerns me greatly um, I think that it is a short term solution that we're being asked for. Um, as with many things, there is no end date on it. Although potentially, depending where people are and the area that they take, um, it may well be we may be able to configure the car park so that there are still some spaces. But um, we don't know what that um, looks like as yet. But I would suggest that it is a short term solution. Thank you. I have Councillor Brain. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, in fact, Jane sort of collared hold of my first one, which is, you know, is this a, a, a daily occurrence because of the car park situation? Um, and the other thing is, uh, do we, Tina, if it's going to be sort of um, controlled for between areas. Um, I know we have some nice um, pull out stretch barriers. I um, wonder if we could get some, some more of those so that we could control the areas, um, either with just that or ideally with some sort of banner in that says that for town council on it um, that goes between so that people know that we're involved in this. You beat me to it, Councillor Brain. Um, um, part of my negotiations with Breckland is that we would offer our barriers that we have because they're quite substantial and would make um, suitable um, enclosures. Um, I have asked if they can produce the, you actually buy covers that go over those barriers and, um, and that we could have, um, we could ask the businesses to produce covers to go over them so that they could demarcate that area. Breckland could perhaps buy a couple for them to put their project confidence on. And I did ask if they could purchase some for us for the, for the town council at the Guild Hall. Thank you. Councillor Berto. Thank you, Chair. I have a point in regards to the owners being on, on businesses to keep the areas tidy. Uh, we, we can only trust that on their in, in financial interests and business interests that they keep the areas tidy because by allowing them a license to expand and get, gain my, more sitting area rather than having the limited sitting area, they have in their own spaces due to the two meter, one meter restrictions, which will cut their business by half, allowing them into the uh, overflow into the street enables them to, to maximize those businesses, which after being closed for months, I'm pretty sure they'll, they'll appreciate and they'll, they'll be happy to, uh, to keep the area tidy. Um, if not, um, then they will lose that license and therefore they'll lose the availability of maximizing the income by having more, more seating and more tables on the outside. So it's, it's, it really is down to the businesses. I'm sure they're going to be reasonable. Um, and if I will remember government, um, government guidance uh, in this regards to the declared question mentioning, 
um, they do advise the country to become more flexible when it, become, when it comes precisely to business wanting to expand, so sitting in the table or, or um, facilities towards the outside of the businesses, provide that it's done with assessments and, safe, and safely. We, can, we are benefiting of the fact that ours and the ones that have been asking to, to expand mm -hmm. are in the marketplace. Therefore, we don't have to look into the, uh, to the perils of being on, on the roadside, the traffic, and having to, 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 you know, to worry about the, the extent of, of the safety of any additional sitting area with, with cars passing by. Um, so I think it's pretty straightforward, and I'm sure the business will appreciate um, a, a bit of a boost after being closed for so long. Thank you. Thank you. I have Councillor Taylor, Councillor Germain, and Councillor Brain again. At the town clerk initially sounded like the Grim Reaper, but I think she's actually for this. Uh, the rest of you, the glass is always half empty, and I know how much a lot of you lot don't like the businesses in town. I personally think it's a great the idea, and Taylor. let's get the pubs open. Councillor Taylor. Councillor Taylor. What would help if you actually made your point without actually making derogative mark remarks to your colleagues? There's no need for it. It doesn't add to the debate. You've already upset one or two members tonight. So maybe you can just stick to addressing the item rather than the derogative comments. If you don't agree with someone, fine. But there is absolutely no, there is absolutely Mark, there is absolutely anything I say. I qualify anything I say in writing, Jeff. Please put it in writing then, Mark, but re refrain from your person. I'm actually gonna ask I'm gonna ask the Anything I utter can be backed up in writing, any of the points that I say. I can bring, and if you need to see them in writing, I am quite happy. What what did I say there that could possibly have upset people? I know how much some of you lot do not like businesses in town. Now, I have lots of paperwork and that I've presented to the council. Right. I'll be happy to get it again. All right, good. Okay, Tina. Tina. Yes. I have great difficulty chairing a meeting that's virtual if a councillor continues to talk over me. If it happens again, I request that the councillor is muted. So when he's debating a point with someone, he actually lets them talk so he understands the point that's being made. So I, I request again, when you make your points, and you do make some valid points, you refrain from the derogative comments about fellow councillors. Councillor Jeremy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I think this is probably a really good example where um, we really uh, struggle as a council where we don't have sort of clear executive powers. Um, obviously, Norfolk and Breckland do, and they've been able to respond quite quickly to the need um, which COVID um, sort of created uh, or exacerbated, if you like, because lots of these issues and supporting businesses has been an issue for a while. Um, so I find it really frustrating that we're really talking about really sort of minutiae, um, whereas the sort of general principle for me is uh, I would want to see Fetford Town Council do all that it can um, within sort of existing budgets and parameters to support businesses in Fetford um, that are trading. If that's uh, thinking creatively with regards to land um, or buildings or equipment such as barriers, um, given what we've been through over the last few months, um, that's okay in my book. You know, we really should be as a council saying that, yes, we will be part of the economic recovery. Um, so as a sort of general principle, uh, I'm all for, for us doing what we can. But um, as for all the detail that's there, you know, I don't feel best placed to comment. And I don't think really a full council format is probably um, the most productive in terms of getting responses because we end up, you know, all, all sort of talking at cross purposes. Um, I thought this agenda item was about sort of more wider economic recovery across Thetford, not necessarily just the market square and our own tenants. Um, I would like to know what we as a council um, and we working with Breckland can do to help the town-wide recovery post-COVID. And I think, having read Sam's letter this afternoon, uh, the, the leader of Breckland, um, I think that's really what he's after. We've got some sort of blue sky thinking here. What can we do collaboratively to, to help Thetford? And I have got some suggestions, if I may, to sort of move us on from the, um, the sort of market square um, sort of area. Um, I think it was probably Stuart that submitted uh, his responses, um, uh, judging by the writing, because he and I often moan about the same things. Um, but the sort of general cleaning and sort of public appearance of the town um, is a major frustration for me. Um, I, you've probably all seen on the London Road, there's some um, 
uh, road signs there um, that have had some graffiti tags on them. Um, I reported them on the 5th of June. They're still there. Um, various sort of bus stop signs, street name signs, uh, all, you know, litter bins, dog bins, and it's not just Bretton and North, but the town council were at fault here. The whole sort of public appearance of the sort of community areas in Fetford could be an awful lot better, an awful lot more inviting, encourages people to visit, encourages people to, to live in Fetford. So that's one thing. And um, the other is around sort of more practical considerations. There is very little um, space available for small businesses and business startups in Fetford. If we if we want people to be entre entrepreneurial, um, if we want to encourage business, then we have to allow the space for it. And from talking to businesses uh, in Fetford through the Business Forum and lots of other forums, um, we really lack small business space in Fetford. And if we want a post-COVID uh, economy that works, that's really key. And we need to be saying that to Breckland. Um, and the third thing is around training and skills. So we know that uh, there is an issue with qualifications and skills attainment in Fetford. It's been the case for a long while. It's well documented. Um, and what uh, businesses are saying is they struggle to recruit the right people in Fetford with the right skills. They'd much rather have a workforce that were, were skilled up and ready. Um, I would want to see us as a council, Breckland, um, whoever, I don't really care who pays for it, um, but we need much more done around sort of skills development, training opportunities um, in, in, in Fetford. So, um, uh, you know, if, if a business wants to locate here, if it wants to expand, the availability of the workforce is absolutely crucial to that. And I still don't see enough focus on training and skills. So um, that's my sort of start for 10. But they're the sorts of things, those three things are what we as a town council should be saying to Brecon. Councillor Brown. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, yeah, I I must admit, um, having been um, up at the academy um, over the last little while, um, what Terry is saying is is absolutely right. They are really, really keen on getting involved in uh, in getting our our youngsters trained up. Um, it's something that um, whether we can help at town level i'm not sure but um you say definitely at, uh, at breckland and district council we've got to push this forward if we want to get businesses sort of doing and making and, and getting themselves out of this mess they need all the support that they can get um and as far as the uh, the, the town doing the bit in in the town center i think this is something that we can do very quickly um well, terry's are very admirable but uh, i don't know how we get it done like tomorrow um whereas we can with the bit on the market hill um perhaps that will be our starter for 10 um to get some you know to give them all the help that they need um i know that when we walked down the town um the town mm -hmm. shops were really really uh, appreciative of the fact that we were there and trying to help um and you know the little things like the hand sanitizers that were in the high street really made it you know easier for them because they were all worried um so you know i think we are trying to help all the businesses that we've got in the town um and as i say i would be very supportive of us taking this this um, town centre plan um, and getting it done ASAP. Thank you. Councillor Wright. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, yes, Terry's correct. Obviously, some of those are my points. I do bang on about them time and time again. But it would be nice to have a, a town-wide blitz with all tiers of local government to try and address some of these issues which have been complained about many times over the years, but it usually ends up, well, it's not my department, or it's not my responsibility. At some point, if we are really to raise our game as a town, we do need to say, well, it's going to cost us a bit to get these things cleaned up, but let's share the cost and get it done. But back to the original point of, you know, opening up the marketplace, I'm just very supportive of that. I'm just ashamed that we haven't got other pieces of land which we can offer to the equation, because like you say, we need to give all our businesses as much chance of succeeding as possible. Thinking outside the box a little bit is the, you know, these shop units down the riverside there, I know it's in private ownership and um, they're looking to get some, but I'm sure, you know, if we get them filled, we need, the thing that we need most in the town is football. 
whether pre-COVID or post-COVID, and we need attractions for them to come in. So we do need, even if they're just pop-up shops down there or we get displays on or arts and crafts stuff, we really need to get the likes of a, if we've got a business development officer in Breckland who are looking at that, you know, th these are the things we need to be banging on doors and saying, well, let's open up um, for a few months at a time and get some people in there to make some attractions in the town. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, Councillor Cam, Brenda. Um, yeah, we, we were just saying about other places. Well, I was just one talking, thinking about um, tall orders because right next to them, there is a little platform. So obviously they could have, on a nice day, they could have chairs there rather than in the high street. I, I, um, that, is our, that is our platform, isn't it? So. Thank you. Thank you for that. Just... Um... To, um, Mr. To make... Chair, uh, Mr. Chairman, Councillor Burnett, can I speak? You, you can when I've finished. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the next meeting with the mayors, the deputy, the deputy mayors, and the clerks is on the eighth of July, and there's been some really good points come out tonight. So I would ask if colleagues can feed those into both myself and Tina, so we can take those forward. Um, I'm not, um, there's some really good points. I'm just going to add the, uh, a couple of things. It's it, put aside for a moment the marketplace um, mm -hmm. discussion, which I suspect the town clerk is going to look for a council to bring forward a proposal so we can actually uh, make a decision on that. There is an opportunity in the current situation of how we share information. Because what's coming out of the pandemic is a greater knowledge of the need and vulnerability within our town and the groups that are stepping forward to support. And I think the opportunity is there for all tiers of local government and partners to deliver targeted programs to support residents, those with need. And I actually, I would encourage that the clerks, deputy mayors and mayors continue to meet quarterly via Zoom, because I think we need to be sharing best practice across the, um, the five market towns and identifying those potential areas of commonality. We have similar issues. The, the, the pressures upon our traditional market is, is a common theme for all five market towns. And I'm sure there's ways we can work together to, to make our markets a more vibrant offer. I see I've got Councillor Brindle to come in. Councillor Brindle. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Uh, unfortunately, the point I wanted to reply to was some time ago, but I, I, I'm going to stick with it, if I may, because we're also obviously all having to take a turn. Um, it was a, a common comment that's often made about the quality of the um, education provided in Setford. And you wouldn't be surprised if I want to defend what the academy and what the West Suffolk College offer at the moment. The problem is that the statistics that are used to, mm. to make this complaint are totally misleading. They're based on the educational standards of the people who live in Setford. Well, if there are no decent jobs in Setford, if there are no high tech jobs in Setford, if there are insufficient managerial jobs in Setford, if there are insufficient professional mm. jobs in Setford, then people with high skills won't stay here. So my son has two degrees, he doesn't work in Setford, he doesn't live in Setford. My daughter has a degree, she doesn't live in Setford, she doesn't work in Setford. We don't have the jobs to keep these people here, which artificially deflates the educational standards of those who are here, and then we get blamed for having poor education. It's, it's a kind of vicious circle, really. Uh, one follows the other. What we need is more business, and that's why over two hours ago in this meeting I said we must be supporting local business. I'm really pleased to hear other councillors, I think particularly Councillor Jeremy, pick this up now. This is a key issue coming out of this meeting, and it must be kept repeated until we take the point on board. We need to do more to encourage local business, and let's not do it by denigrating local education. If more is needed, and I'm sure it is, then let's help that as well. But let's not say 
that because the present standards are low, that proves that educational standard is low. It doesn't. It proves there aren't enough of the right kind of jobs. Let's get some more jobs here. I agree with your sentiments, but we also need to work out the, the route to that. Chris? Yeah? Um, I'm looking at the participants, and we've lost at least two. Yeah, sorry, I just uh, took that off. I thought... Uh, there it is. Got it? No. no. Chris, I'm talking about actually the members in the room. Oh, members in the room, I am sorry. Um, I can't see from mine because I've only got the minor screen because I'm not sharing. Somebody else could tell you by looking in the... Uh, uh, yeah, I think it might be internet problems because their statuses have gone to no response. So that might be an internet issue. Okay, I, cu I currently have 12 councillors, so we have two councillors not in a, miss a meeting, Chris. So you just need to record that. Yeah, I, I don't know if because I can't look when I've got the big screen no. up. Councillor Burnett. Oh, well, thank you. No, actually, um, two points. One, uh, in regards to what the town clerk was on about the market square, I totally support what she she's actually uh, proposes. I think it's a, a good idea, and I think we, as long as it's only temporary until this crisis is over, I don't see a problem with that. And my second point I wanted to make was to Terry Jeremy was the fact that uh, when he was talking about a firm saying there's not the skilled staff in the town to take on, and perhaps it might be a good idea for us to uh, inform some of the smaller firms in Fetford of taking up the opportunity from the uh, um, tr the Treasury, for the Chancellor of the Central Government, who's offering £3,000, partially sum up front to start with, to take on someone to give them them skills on an apprenticeship, which means taking on school children who've left school or and teach them the skills that they want, that they say are not in town. Surely that's got to be useful, right? And it's worth three thousand pounds. Thank you. Um, just a reminder, guys, we, we we are looking for ways to work in partnership with, um, you know, the other tiers of government and and, and partners generally and collaboratively. Um, Carla. Thank you, Cher. Uh, just a quick uh, word to say that I fully agree with the councillor, uh, Jeremy and Brindle. Um, we we need more training. We need to investment in, in, in skills. Uh, in, most of you know that it, everybody knows that I'm all for you skills and improved training um, in any capacity, any way possible. So I'll be all for any projects, any ideas or any um, activities that, that go that way and that actually lift up the 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 quality of the, the qualifications and the aptitudes of, of, of the people of Tesford, which is, at the moment it is considered to be low. And I think goes, that goes pair in pair with the, with the lack of business investment. I know there's a bit of a cycle, like some, someone mentioned before, we need the businesses for people to work in them, and we need the qualifications for the businesses to, to source the workforce locally. I think some needs to be on both sides, but definitely starting by uh, supporting businesses to, to locate and, and at the same time, uh, uh, you know, enable uh, education institutions to to, to train, um, whether there's a through apprenticeships, which I'm fully in favour of, or any other way um, to people to supply the workforce to the to the businesses as they come in uh, would be ideal. Uh, clearly, it's not as straightforward. Um, and, and, uh, um, but unless we start promoting the business, and promoting as a, as a pit stop to invest. And to try and, and and then use that investment to 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 put the money into um, opening or supporting any more education uh, education or training based facilities. Um, that is the way the circle the circle will go. We will go full circle between promoting the businesses and then reinvesting that capital into education to supply the workforce in, into into those businesses. So a whole lot. I fully agree with Councillor Brindle. A whole lot more needs to be done to get businesses supported and to get them to invest in desperate. That comes first and then the rest will follow. Thank you. And the question for us as a council is how we work with district and county to facilitate that. Absolutely. That's it the question for us. It needs to be a full partnership. Councillor Brame and then Councillor James. Thank you, Mr. Yeah. Mayor. Uh, 
I think everybody has really spoken very, very well about you know, the things that are happening in Thetford or not happening in Thetford. And we really do need to uh, to try and help. Um, I think perhaps we needed to try and help pre-COVID. And we're definitely going to have to try and help even more post-COVID. I think a lot of things, because of virtual meetings, you may well find that um, it will be easier for these sort of things to happen because um, I know in, in lots of cases now, you know, it used to be we were at the, the back end of Norfolk or at the gateway to Norfolk, um, but a long way from Deerham, Norwich. Um, with these virtual meetings, I think perhaps we can nudge things forward and get things going. Um, which is all well and good, and I hope that we do it. But I'm far more concerned that at um, 9.35, um, we're not looking at whether or not we're going to support this idea of getting the market up and running, get some banners in there, and get these businesses working. Um, you know, the other things I think we should have as an agenda item, but, um, you know, Reckland have asked us, can we help with this? Can we try and facilitate this particular project? Um, and we seem to have got off the track of it. And I would like to get back to say, you know, could we propose that we, you know, or could I propose that we actually support the idea of the um, of, of the two businesses, uh, the stores on the market, the gazebos, um, and that we actually get involved with the police to sort out the PCSO problem. Um, no. and let's move on. Okay. I, I, I believe to support you, Councillor James is going to round that up all nicely for us. Am I correct, Councillor James? Thank you, Mr Mayor. You must have been watching me scribbling away on my piece of paper and trying to form a proposal out of it. Um, so taking the working paper that we've been provided with, may I make the proposal that we create a plaza provision on our marketplace to facilitate the opening event as requested in conjunction with Breckland District Council, the police and the local businesses, please. I'll second that motion. <laughs> Thank um, you. I, I tell you, you're quicker than a gun swing, <laughs> <laughs> Chris, can you do your magic, please? Sure. Just to come in. Here we go. Excuse me, because I just quantify that that's not just for a one-off event, but we'll have it um, for short-term usage. That will be reviewed perhaps monthly. Well, at the risk of being really, really pedantic, the opening paragraph says, as part of the Breckland Confidence Project to support and boost businesses emerging from the COVID-19 restrictions, the market towns were requested by the mayors and clerks to support an opening event on 4th of July and to add projects to the add resources to the project where feasible. I think this is probably the first stage. Um, and obviously we have our policies and procedures in place in terms of um, our open spaces, our requirements, our risk assessments. And if that all works fine, then actually this is a really exciting opportunity yeah. for the town centre to have that wonderful European street cafe kind of feel that actually a lot of us have said that would be really nice. So the paper itself actually refers to an opening event. Um, I think that's the only thing that's on the table at the moment, personally. Um, well, um, yes, they do. They do want to. Sorry, they do want us to support the event. But if we have the paperwork that they can apply for use of our open spaces, which um, then that is just a normal process that we would go through for anybody to use one of our open spaces, as long as they meet the criteria for COVID. So, um, Councillor Jeremy was talking about, um, you know, we're talking about the minutiae here and perhaps these should be decisions that are just normal operational, um, perhaps. Um, so, um, so um, I understand that um, it's probably my wording wasn't what it was supposed to be, but um, I would ask that we... Um, allow them to apply to use the usage using our normal open space procedures 
and I would look at reviewing that monthly because hopefully within a short period of time everybody will be back inside their buildings. Are you happy with that Jane? I'll be completely honest, no, um, because the town clerk clearly stated earlier that this is open-ended. Um, I would suggest reviewing on a fortnightly basis might be more appropriate, bearing in mind um, how rapidly things do change. So I'm happy to amend it to, to, um, to the proposal to be um, creating a plaza provision on our marketplace on a short-term basis to facilitate the opening event and ongoing trading to be reviewed fortnightly. Okay. I'll second uh, that proposal. There, there you go. There's the council for that second <laughs> again. Um, Chris, would you like to take the vote, please? I can. And I'd ask Councillor James perhaps to let me have her exact wording for the minutes, please. So here we go. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Barretto. Four. Councillor Brain. Four. Councillor Brindle. Four. Thank you. Councillor Burnett. Four. Thank you. Councillor Cannon. Four. Thank you. Councillor Crawford. In favour. Thank you. Councillor Harvey. Four. Councillor Hodgkinson. Four. Councillor Hollis. Four. Councillor James. Four. Councillor Jeremy. Four. Councillor Taylor. He's not here. John, I'll, I'll record it on the minutes. Councillor Wright. Four. Thank you. Well, all present are uh, in agreement, Chair. Thank you very much. And, and just to remind colleagues that um, the next meet time that little group will meet will be the 8th of July. So please do feature comments. There's some really good long term strategic comments come out of this tonight. Um, so if you've got any feedback for us to take in, that'd be really useful about how we work together during the pandemic and those long term strategic aims for the town. Thank you. Um, moving on to item 88 to 20, committee officers update. Tina. Well, my update will be um, we're going to be trying opening the toilets tomorrow and um, that we hope to facilitate an opening on the marketplace on the 4th of July. And like I say, I think it's really exciting times and um, hopefully these are first steps and we'll find other ways that we can support the businesses and the community in the town. Excellent. And I should imagine 8920 is not going to be too dissimilar, which is community engagement. Uh, yes, what we'll do is we'll put out information about the toilets tomorrow as soon as we've confirmed it. Mm -hmm. And um, Ros and I are already working with the two businesses. And as soon as we can get information about whether they're ready to roll for the um, 4th of July, we'll get that out as well. David will be speaking to the market traders to tell them what's happening as well. So, um, yes, uh, we will get out the information as soon as we can confirm it. And um, that will go ac across all platforms and the press. Um, I have Councillor James and Councillor Brown with their hands up. Thank you, Mr Mayor. That's good. Continuing positivity. Um, I would suggest that we have a good press release in terms of our Honoured Citizen and Honoured Junior Citizen Awards. And, um, yeah, let's think virtual, let's think different, let's think celebratory. Good point. Roy? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'd also like to ask uh, if we can actually get this um, safety for children and safeguarding thing that is going across Norfolk, see it, report it, hear it, report it. There's a big thing on the, on, the, on Norfolk's website. Can we pick up on that? Uh, Thetford has um, several cases of um, children and young people not being looked after as well as they can. So can we please get the safeguarding thing onto all our platforms? All said. Thank you, Roy. Yeah, I'll get the media boys onto it. Thank you. Item 9020, which is the exclusion of, exclusion of the press and public. To consider, consider resolving that pursuant to the Public Bodies Admissions and Meetings Act 
1960. The press and public be excluded for any of the remaining items of business on the grounds that publicity would be prejudicial to the public interest by reason of the confidential nature of the business to be discussed. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do now is turn the um, recording off.